All right. There we go. Um, hello and welcome. Welcome to our stream. We're going to be playing. We're going to try playing Black Haven, but um, there is a bit of a problem with it. Um, so it lags a little, and sometimes it, there's a bit of a delay with the with the cursor. So if it lags too much, and it's kind of deemed un unplayable, or at least it's not as playable as we would like it to be, despite um, despite. lowering the settings we're going to move to the rewinder which is something that we've also been wanting to play for a while this is something that we've always wanted to play for a while as well we got it for free well it is a free game the yeah the problem is the graphics it might it might uh not be as good as it should kind of like that one although that one was still all right this one however i'm not really sure we tested it a little and it's not it's okay when OBS is not open, but we tried it with OBS. I'm not really sure how to do how to go about it. I'm going to close the browser that we have on as well, and going to close any other programs that may interfere with it. So hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully it doesn't. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't. Oh god. <laughs> yes. And here goes. Uh, so we tried it. So there's a save file, but since we're... Well, that was just testing. We're going to go to a new game. And really though, this model... I really should replace this model already. But we haven't set them up. All right. Hopefully the sound isn't that loud. Uh, I hope you'll be able to let us know if there is anything wrong. Let's see if game and start over. Yes. So. And I did. All right. Let's hope that it goes well. Also, if we ever do it quickly, if ever it we go through it quickly, we're also going to go to move to the reminder. It's mom, I'm gonna be here all by myself. Yeah, because they're closed for Flag Day. I don't know if they're going to be closed for MLK Day, too. We start the earliest of any of the HBCUs. I'm never going to be here for that anyways. Plus, I don't know if I'm even going to want to be here. I might just stay in Greece. Psh, so. Yes, you would, too, come visit me. Yeah, all I do is answer the phones. This is supposed to be a marketing internship, but I haven't even done anything on the website yet. No, I don't know how to make a website yet, but neither do they. I'll get to that in spring semester, after I get back from Greece. All right then, Mom, I gotta let you go. You know how strict they are about being on the phone, and I am a model employee who's getting an outstanding recommendation. 
So that's okay, us. Okay, mom. Love you too. Bye. Okay. Better go check my email and get started. Alright, uh, one of the most bothering things about this for me is how loud the sound is. <laughs> and there's only a master volume, there's not, there's not even like, a, a separate volume for like, the voice and the background sound. So, yeah, you might have, to, it's kind of hard trying to like, balance it out on on our ears as well as on OBS. It's, wait, I think we might have to adjust it a bit. We might have to wait. Oh god, it's moving on its own. Oh shit. Ah yes. The ever drifting mouse. Um okay, so far it's not too bad. Although the opening is very, very bad. <laughs> Her voice, her voice is so loud, I, I can't. Mm, wait, we're going to try and adjust the volume a bit. But it would end up uh, making the background noise a bit too quiet. <laughs> Oh, wait. <laughs> All right, it won't escape. <laughs> I hate this. All right, so we're supposed to be demanding. Good morning, Thomas. I see you up there looking down at me. So this is the computer, this is our badge. I think you're supposed to kind of press it on the door and whatnot. Alright, Helen, what you got for me this morning? Alright, Helen is their uh her boss, I think. Or at the very least her immediate superior. Yeah. Helen. So these are the previous emails that she had. We can read them if you want to, but the important one is this one, the instructions. But we're going to go through it just so. Come on. All right, do you want to read it? Okay. Um, Dear Kendra, let me formally congratulate you on starting your first day at the Black Haven Hall historical society. You should be very proud of yourself to have received this opportunity. I'll be coming by first thing in the morning to go over the basics and give you the tour. But I also wanted to pass along some ground rules for when you're at reception. Please make sure you're in your seat, visible and smiling. All shift except for your scheduled breaks. I hate that I, <laughs> I hate that she capitalizes smiling it's like it's not like she doesn't understand what do you mean it sounds very condescending like especially when you go, go down here hmm. weirdly enough it's actually working better than earlier we tried it out earlier as well <laughs> Answer every call to the desk with good morning slash afternoon. Thanks for calling Black Haven Hall. This is Kendra speaking. Yeah, totally not her for Andy. And it sounds very, very, very condescending. It's just shit. <laughs> I mean, like, do you really have to calculate it? I mean, it's not like she's not gonna understand just because she's black, right? Right. Like, and there's no slang, too. It's just shit. Come on, man. Of course she's not going to go no slang. 
Of course, she's going to go no, no slang. <laughs> this is a respectable establishment. What do you mean? <laughs> you know, of course, no one's going to do that sort of shit. Eesh. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, Kendra speaking, how may I help you? Remember, you're going to be the first point of contact for our guests, so always maintain a dignified tone and no slang. Of course she's not going to do that. I mean, it's a historical... It's a museum for... Heck. A reminder, our dress code is business casual. Yeah, I know, right? It rubs us the wrong way as well. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, this is very, very hostile. Oh, God. I mean, you could at least... I mean, come on, man. Come on. Even in an email, holy moly. She's not even being... Heck, it wouldn't even last the door, okay? Like, as soon as I, as I see this, I'm, I'm eating myself out of here. We are technically consenting to be filmed by our cameras throughout the day, but I wouldn't fret about it. Bill only even looks at those if there's an irregularity with door entries and exits. Always follow the directions closely. We're, we run a tight ship and don't want to have to ask twice. Okay, sure. I think that's about it for now. I look forward to seeing you in just a bit. Okay. Come on. This is the flag day um, email. Hi everyone, once again it's time for our biggest blowout bash of the year, celebrating Flag Day in style with all our Black Haven family. Right, family, okay. <laughs> because the 4th of July is always one of our biggest visitor days of the year, the Historical Society chose another patriotic summer to show our appreciation to all of you. Once again, we'll be celebrating at the Tidewater Con Country Club, just off Highway 60 past the inter interchange. We will be grilling Black Haven, style, uh, Black Haven style with catering provided by the club, an open bar. Wow, okay, exclamation. I can see the excitement and plenty of festive activities. Garden party attire is expected. Ladies in white, men in navy. Wow. Okay, but everyone should bring their most creative start and striped accessories. Wait a minute, you're not supposed to wear the flag. <laughs> I'm just gonna. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like. It's like, please just t say it as it is, okay? We're going to fucking abuse you. <laughs> please. please. Don't. Don't. Can. Can. Uh, like. Sugarcoat it. Uh, it, under the word family. I mean, please, it's already a wet, red flag. Since most of you are members of the club already, also don't forget to bring your swim trunks and you can see Phil or Debbie if you want to set up tea times before or after. Or, what? Before for after lunch? What do you mean? <laughs> we'll see every last one of you. Wow. And your family's all there starting at 11 a.m. to worry for Star Spangled Banners for the USA. Look, look it's not like... <sighs> wow. And here are the instructions. Here are the actual instructions for... Ah, shit. Okay. There we go. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't respond to, like, the cursor because the cursor is actually, like, way to the left here. But it still shows up here, in the middle. Yeah. Hi, Kendra. Thank you again for holding down the fort today. Just wanted to pass along your special assignment. Yeah, so basically... <laughs> Mandatory office parties. Goodness. But she's... She, being an intern... Is kind of forced to uh, like work here during a holiday. <laughs> That's kind of sus. Not gonna lie. 
I mean, if it's here, it's gonna be... Man. It's understandable, but at the same time, it's abusive. Anyway. I don't know. It's like, it's like intern is another word for... <laughs> for... Someone you can... Like, take advantage of. Alright, thank you for today. Just wanted to pass along your special assignment. I really hope you can get through all of these since you'll have the place to yourself with no visitors. I heard from our consultants that most of the new apps have completed uploading on our digital guide devices. I'd like you to test the gallery quiz app. Oh boy, we're gonna have quiz. Uh, make sure you can get through it without any issue. It also will be good for you to brush up on the museum collections. I'm just glad that the main character is actually thinking of not staying here for long and actually going to Greece. Going to stay in Greece. Because this is not a good environment. The new audio tour file should also be uploaded, so why don't you try to go up to the big house and test all those out? Make sure... Look at that capitalization! What the hell, man? It's Make sure to listen to the end of each and let me know if you notice anything odd. I told maintenance to activate your badge for the house for today, even though it's otherwise locked up. If you can get both those... Both those? Both of those? Yeah. Done before lunch. In the afternoon, I'd like you to continue the document scanning in the archive so we can finally start getting some of our stuff up on the website. Maybe you'll be able to help us a little with the coding? Can you hit the following folders? I pulled the boxes for each and left them out in the archives for you. Thomas Harwood Papers, Folder 18. Anna Harwood Papers, Folder 9. Archaeological Reports, Folder 6. I think Thomas Harwood is like a major historical figure in this, uh, in this game. I think he's fictional though. <laughs> I'm not really familiar with like the history of America. <laughs> anyway, make sure you read through each of the pages before scanning to make sure they're all legible and please don't skip any pages. I've left the archive key for you at the front desk. When you finish, please return it to the top desk drawer in my office. You're back. I'll start by testing the gallery quiz. Let me grab a charged digital tour guide. Oh, oh, shit. 
Oh, there we go. <laughs> the mic suddenly, like, conked out. I don't know why. That's weird. Okay. Yeah, so this is the instructions. I can actually, like, wait. Wait. <laughs> Okay, wait, wait. So we have to do like the the apps first. Oh damn it. There's barely any sound here and then the voices are so loud. It's just it's just weird. <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway, so we're gonna go for the gallery quiz app first and then and then we're going to go to the audio tour. I hope. Oh god. Oh. Okay. Her. Oh. Her device. Digital guy. Stick up. Yeah. Okay, got it turned on. How much did they pay to get their logo on here? <laughs> Let Wait, me get huh? my headphones. Headphones, my app. Let's get this quiz going. That is not headphones. Those are earphones. Please. <laughs> is this it? Is this it? I need to test the gallery quiz first. Oh, okay. How do I even get to the gallery quiz archive? Oh, these are the pick shop. How do I even turn on the? Oh, this is the gallery. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. You know, from the way this all sounds, it's kind of, kind of horror to me. <laughs> I think this is, I think this is what we're in for. Oh, baby, hello. Oh, how beige. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm, okay, scan the object that answers the question. What? Three wrong answers. All right, first one. Let's get this. So, added the famous column porch to the uh, scan an object code to answer. Um, what memorial gallery? Why is that broken mirror? What the hell? <laughs> okay. Uh, how did the famous column porch? Is this it? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, hardwood, da 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 da. We're gonna carve in here. Being attacking walls. Roving. Wait. Our story begins with American initiative and ingenuity in 1645. Hardwood. What? Smartly purchased a group of underperforming farms. After a surprise attack by roving Indians massacred many of their owners, he called his new estate Black Haven. Likely after a shady inlet uh, near the riverbank, but possibly because the farm had already played host to so many dark events. Hmm. This is kind of sus. Refusing to accept mediocrity, Nathaniel made Blackhaven's lands more productive than ever. In 1697, his son Christopher built a modest brick house, which he named Blackhaven Hall. Christopher adopted the swan as the symbol of Blackhaven, remembering the noble birds that once swam in a nearby pond during their childhood. Blackhaven rose to true greatness under the visionary Samuel Harwood, who labored to greatly expand the plantation's workforce, earning a sizable fortune for his efforts. In 1734, he expanded Blackhaven Hall into a proper mansion with an imposing column facade and richly carved interior. Now known as one of Virginia's finest homes, Blackhaven would attain its final grandeur under the great patriot 
Thomas Harwood, who added two flanking halls in 1770. On the south end, an edifying library for his massive book collection, and to the north, a lively ballroom for his beloved wife, Sarah. So this is a Samuel Harwood. He's the one we made. Do we scan it? Yay! <laughs> we go. Oh boy. Which one is Sarah again? Is she the kid? Damn it. Piece of furniture. Some mattress. Sarah's dress. I think Sarah's like. Oh my. Forgotten founding father. Ah, no wonder. Which one is it? Which one is it? Armchair, car table, tea table, side chair. Man, that, that broken mirror is creepy, I'm not gonna lie. Oh my, there are so many pieces of furniture, I'm gonna. Harvard family portrait. Ah, so we have to find like the portrait, portrait. Family portrait, family portrait. I wonder where it is though. This is that one. Uh, I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate this. So this is the portrait. Oh hey there. Oh. I wonder if this is the first time it's ever been just you and another black girl here. What stories must you have about these people? Oh boy. <laughs> Which piece of furniture matches Sarah's dress? Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So Sarah Harwood is number five. Unknown servant. Wow, okay. They didn't even bother to know her name. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this so much. Uh, okay, number five. So what? Ah, so the one in yellow. So we have to get something yellow, I guess. Hmm. Maybe this one? Wow, okay. When you want to sit up really straight with two friends. <laughs> Which? Wow, okay. Ceramic was discovered in the ruins of the servants' quarters. I know, I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Ceramic, huh? During, let me see, new discoveries in daily life of colonial Americans are being made every day by the Black Haven Hall Historical Society. In addition to our research programs and our collection of the Harwood family paper, the society has sponsored multiple multiple archaeological digs over the years. Okay. Recovered artifacts. Which ceramics? Can I Oh my god. I don't even know. Name the past, build the future. We're not even sure. Not only a pasture. End of an year after the total destruction of Black Haven Hall by fire, many called to rebuild, but the ever defiant Thomas Harwood vowed to leave the ruins standing as a reminder of British treachery. Unfortunately, the last ma master of Black Haven would never see a new home, as Thomas succumbed to a strange illness and passed away early in 1782. His wife Sarah moved herself and the children to Maryland to live on her family's estate and eventually sold most of the Black Haven property to William Harwood, Thomas's brother. William's son, Tim Timothy, would later build nearby Oakmont Plantation, the current home of the Harwood dynasty, incorporate the Black Haven lands and staff into his farm. Okay, where the hell do I even look at the... Look at the thingy. What's this? 
Oh, okay. Punched in lantern. Recovered from the site of the large tobacco barn. Tobacco barn? Tin. This lantern is the treasured place in Horowitz family lore, as it was rumored for many decades to have been the one carried by the folk hero Farmer Joe during the Battle of Black Haven. Its actual origins are unclear, as records show it was first discovered sitting in an old barn on property in the late 19th century. Also, unlike the last lanterns often depicted in popular images of Farmer Joe, punched tin lanterns were designed primarily to protect a lit candle from the wind while outdoors, rather than to provide one with illumination. Okay. I don't think this is it, though. Ceramic. So it has to be like, uh, like a cup or something. Well, no, not these ones. These are metal. Hammer, scientific error, world's greatest library. Hmm. Teapot. Oh, this one. Okay. Archaeologists. Archaeologists at Black Haven were stunned when they unearthed this broken but complete teapot while digging at the site of the servants' quarters, far too fine for the simple concerns of the staff. Researchers eventually determined it belonged to the porcelain collections already on display in this very gallery. No one can be certain how the teapot got so far away from its rightful owners, but one theory suggests a clumsy servant may have broken it and hid it away to avoid taking responsibility. Wow, that that narrative, holy moly, man. I like this better than the unbroken one. I bet there was more Yeah, to I bet there was more to it. I mean So aside from anything these people made up. Oh boy. <laughs> aside from the things these people made up. <laughs> what is the oldest fictional publication in the guy? Okay. Is this it? Uh, Thomas Horowitz has long gone unrecognized as the one of the most learned men in America. His staggering intellect was fueled by his collection of thousands of books. At one time, the largest library is the entire colonies. Uh, in in the entire colonies, uh, Thomas' interests were universal, with books on poetry, drama, history, architecture, agriculture, travel, economics. Astronomy, botany, and optics. Tragically, the majority of these volumes were destroyed along with Blackhaven, but thanks to Harwood's fame, generosity of few volumes he had graciously loaned to friends survived to be part of this exhibit. Speaking of having a lot of books, apparently, apparently, they found that having a lot of books that they like, you've hoarded but you haven't you've had but you haven't read it's actually not that bad but hmm. where, where are all of the kind of gold and it's not this fictional publication What's this one? And the pen of Thomas Harwood. Prolific writer, but then we lost at the ages. Okay, and nevertheless. Yeah, but yeah, apparently like it's not that bad to for books. Like it kind of represents like how much you're aware of like what you don't know, basically. So it's it's okay, I guess. Uh, and Black Haven Hall and Historical Society is a proud owner of the civic leader's most important writings. The collection of below includes letters from Harwood's wide network of correspondence as well as his account book from the early seventeen seventies. Wow. Um, uh, what are we? Mm 
there anything to... Rumors of astronomy, works of William Shakespeare, Gardener's Calendar. Okay. Okay, works of William Shakespeare. This is what? 1709. Okay, I'm gonna check the other one. I don't think those are fictional as well. I think I'm gonna go back to the, the Shakespeare book. Yeah, this one doesn't have... This one doesn't have, like... So I think I'm gonna go for the Shakespeare book. Yeah, let's let's try and get it. Oh, oh, it's so slow. It's like ninth grade all over again. Ooh -hoo. Except Miss Hayes isn't looking right at me, asking if anyone understands where Othello is coming from. Oh wow, that's no subs are lagging. He's made up, right? So doesn't that mean all of them, or none of them? Yeah. So wait, wait, wait. So she's kind of aware that this is a fictional thing? This is all a fictional thing? Oh man. Yeah, we read that Sometimes earlier. It doesn't seem like it'd be very bright. Yeah, it's for protection apparently. This one has got to be easy. Atop Black Haven Hall. Like on top of it. Uh, I guess. Wait, is this it? Is this it? I hope. Yeah. Huh. This is not doing it for me. No bald eagle available. Yeah, they have a swan. Some messed up stuff in mythology. Says my A plus in that class. Oh boy. <laughs> this is a real bougie way of saying fake. The only modern reproduction in the gallery. Holy moly. So bougie. Mm, long range back even might be targeted by British ships. Peers were realized. Uh, uh, Thomas and the rest of his family barricaded themselves inside Blackhaven, violently exchanging musket fire with the boats below as they shelled the mansion. When a shrapnel from an aerial bomb set fire to the roof, Thomas bowed in fight. What? Fought to fight to the death, but his devoted family begged and convinced him to escape into the night with their loyal servants. What is this? It's a sword. Black Haven of Lays. Armor Joel. Goodness. Please. <laughs> Only modern reproduction. Wow. This the American flag. Oh, this is a reproduction of the camera obscura. Hey, hey Apos. Yeah, just just lurk away. Oh god. Wait, is it even working? <laughs> oh no. Wait. I gotta I gotta go back to that. Thing. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> Thanks for the lurk. Mm. Many of our friends, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I guess this is the one. Whee! This lets you see all the stuff you already got, only lower quality. <laughs> Watch out, guess we got a math question. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Which candlesticks are younger than Elizabeth or Carwood? Oh. Wait, which one? Is, uh... Okay, Elizabeth is the older kid. Okay. Oh god. Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Do we do we even get to read anything on her though? Oh, 
Thanks for the lurk as well. Uh, hmm. I don't know where uh, these are the friends. Wait, 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 wait. Anna. Wait a minute. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> wait, I didn't know where. <laughs> I don't know where. Wait, so Elizabeth, right? So this kid right here. Oh, God. How do we even know where candlesticks are younger? How do we even know? Like, so it's 1970 something, right? Seventy. Oh god. Oh, it's seventeen seventy something. Seventy seventy five seven. Oh boy. Wait. <laughs> How do we even know where how old Elizabeth is though? Refinement, blah blah blah. The architectural plan of the of the whole thing. These are the friends. Ish. Oh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Hmm. Has to be like older. I guess one of them, only one of them is like like seven. Oh man. Hmm. Okay, this one is seventy seventy five. Probably this one, I guess. Ah, shit. Oof. Oof. I couldn't even see it clearly holding 1727, 77. What do you mean? Wait. Is that 1701? Oh. This one. Are we sure one of these didn't burn down Black Haven? <laughs> what did Thomas Harwood write in response to the Virginia governor? Alright, Thomas Harwood was a fierce supporter of individual liberty and the promise of American dream. His love of English culture initially left him reluctant to support the Massachusetts rebels. But when uh, Governor Dunmore threatened freedom and local property rights in Virginia, Thomas became an enthusiastic revolutionary, even being to publish his pamphlet or present crisis where he penned his most famous phrase, without property no man lives free. Okay. So, is he saying nobody my age gets to be free? Yeah, considering- like the couch, but we already did that one. <laughs> Black even tobacco. Come on. Huh? I'm not gonna lie though, I'm like almost nobody has nobody can afford property nowadays. Holy shit. Hmm. Hmm. 
especially with that system of having having to take out the loan and having to have a good credit score it's just shit i'm sorry Hmm, so bad, so bad. Oh, that one pipes. I think it's the pipes. <laughs> Let's see. Where the black Asian vape set? <laughs> yes, I've won absolutely nothing. This is why I'm running stuff today. Now I'm about to go check this off my list for Helen. Absolutely nothing. <sighs> Okay, so do we just get out of here? I hate that mirror. <laughs> Please, let me get out of here. I don't like the mirror at all. Do we just like get out of here though? I should probably use the exit door instead. It says exit. Ah, oh, so I have to go through this whole thing. And then, oh, I hate that mirror. Why is it even there? Why is it even broken? Oh god, looking glass. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. It gives me the creeps. And why is why did it that why did it even have to ha be on the end of the hall? Nobody can afford property nowadays, <laughs> especially not with not with the mortgages. Oh hell no! And having like, the quiz off my list at reception. And oh oh god! Uh, okay, I gotta update that one. Quiz is done. Oh, wow. The okay. Person to pass. Time to head outside and get that audio tour. Ouch. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks for calling Blackhaven Hall. This is Kendra speaking. How may I help you? Oh, uh, hi there. Uh, I had a question. Is uh, Catherine there? I'd just really like to talk to Catherine. I'm wow. sorry. She's not working today. Well, that's fine. Uh, I'm sure you can help Cassandra. See, the thing is... I Kendra. Good Wow, such a but at a local auction I have come across a brass button claiming to be from Harwood's unit. So what I need you to tell me is Actually, sir, I'm just because what I was thinking was maybe this button is not from the county militia but from the county enlistment of US rifles. Mm -hmm. Because as such a mansplainer, what the fuck? Oh my god. Just absolutely fantastic. Can't answer this old question. Keep up the good fight. Semper Fi. Semper Fi. Damn it. Semper Fi. And. Is it actually Semper Fi, you know? Holy moly. Wow. That was sudden. Such a man's plane. I'm all ready, so I should head outside to the main house. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. You can actually get the tour of the mansion. Okay, okay. So this is the museum. Ooh, finally my chance to read up on Black Haven all by myself. <laughs> we. <laughs> wait, do we even? Do we even get... Oh, boy. Yeah, they're really just doing this for the moonies. That reminds me. I'm actually glad he answered his own question. But damn. Oh god. He didn't even let her talk. He was just like, 
going on and on. Right? It's like he just needed someone to like, like, like bounce off of, but not really like just a wall to bounce. <laughs> Might as well be talking to a wall. I hope this doesn't lag so much now. <laughs> oh god. Okay, so this is the... Oh, okay, shit. Back to start. Audio tour. Okay. Okay. This is totally yeah. gonna ruin my Spotify. Oh man. <laughs> Imagine having a playlist like this. <laughs> okay, so grounds, grand entrance. So this is the grounds, right? All right. Don't hate the view. Let's do this. Oh wow! They even have, they even have the thing. Throughout your journey into the world of Thomas Harwood, America's forgotten founding father. Oh god. <laughs> it's so cheap. We recommend you take the path to the left. You can pause or restart each tour stop at any time by using the touch screen on your personal digital tour guide. Once a stop is finished, just scan the QR code on another plaque to continue. Your digital device will show you the remaining stops you have left to visit. You can also rescan any plaque to hear its tour stop again. For the moment, oh my God. let's forget the present and that, that... travel back to 1781, at the height of the American Revolution. You're now walking along the same grand entrance path that guests to Blackhaven took towards the mansion, after passing through the gate of the large brick wall that surrounded this yard. Blackhaven was not always so imposing. In the 1600s, this land was used mostly by small tobacco farmers who bravely crossed the ocean to start new lives in Virginia. Bravely crossed the ocean, my ass. I bet it's not the case. Lives ended when the band of treacherous Indians launched a sneak attack, ruthlessly killing even women and children. Still to this day, some say you can see the ghosts of these families trying to find one another. Some even without their scalps. Please don't let this be horror. <laughs> Nathaniel Harwood. He smartly purchased discounted lots and began the story of Black Haven as we know it. We'll continue our tour at the top of the hill. Wow. Okay. Damn, are they all gonna be that long? Or have or have ghosts? My lordy. Please don't please, I don't want a horror game, please. I mean, I, I'm okay with ghosts, just don't let this be a horror game. Please. She walks so slowly, I can't. Does it really take this long? Oh my lordy. No wonder this takes two hours, holy shit. Let's do the left. I guess they took their sweet time back then. I guess she could take the time now. It's not like it's gonna... Oh man. Please don't let this be a horror game. Please. Well, I wouldn't mind if it was a horror game. So the grand entrance is next. Yeah. I do hope that there are no um anomalies. No anomalies. Uh, at the very least, there are birds, so I don't think there are any uh, any things here that would be very very harmful. 
because birds don't usually run out. So this is the grand entrance. We should scan this. Yeah. Visiting carriages could parade in front of the grand house along this circle path. Originally, the site also featured two flanking buildings, a freestanding kitchen set apart to prevent fires. Hmm, I wonder why it went on fire. And stables for Blackhaven's most prominent horses. I thought the last one was the Grand Duke. Visiting carriages would parade, but in 1781 there were additional buildings. To the left stood the kitchen, built freestanding to keep out smells, smoke, and protect against fires. British cannon, however, were another story. To the right stood the fine stables, housing beloved animals, including Eleanor Harwood's legendary horse, Duchess. Wow, Let's Duchess. take a closer look at the house. This girl really named her horse Duchess. Um, the best name for best name for the horse. All right. So next is the front porch. Ah, so they replaced some of it with glass, just to pre uh, preserve the look of it without exposing it more to the elements. I suppose. Here is the front porch. This is the oh, this is the front porch. I think ah, oh, this is the front porch. Uh, the first Blackhaven Hall was a smaller, but still elegant brick hall, completed in sixteen nineteen seven ninety seven. The final Georgian masterpiece was the later work of Samuel Harworth, who added imposing columned porches. The glass and steel restoration was completed in 2019 using designs from JJC Architects. Alright. Oh, I know this style. Ionic, I think. No, Doric. Greece, you didn't hear that. Uh, so she was into... She is into... Before we go in, step back and take in Blackhaven Hall. This house is an example of Georgian architecture, named after British kings like the tyrant King George III. This style hmm. features symmetry, balance, and Greco-Roman influences, but with little ornamentation. Thanks to a state-of-the-art structural glass restoration, Blackhaven now has regained its original form. This striking, award-winning design by international firm JJC Architects duplicates the original porches, peaked roof, and top rows of dormer windows. Completed in 2019 at a cost of over $20 million, the restoration received funding from Harcourt Industries and its CEO, Thomas Harwood III, and is even LEED certified. Let's go inside. They're really trying to boost the environment on a tobacco plantation. It doesn't sound very good. And considering... Considering... It is a plantation. So what about what about the and there are three stops before you even get into the house. All right. So the foyer is the foyer inside. I suppose. No, looking at it like this, it is a little creepy. So this is. Um, We did restore some of the things. What is this? Ah, this is the foyer. Blackhaven's uh, entrance foyer once featured a dizzying staircase and elaborate ornamented woodwork throughout. The current glass and steel staircase was designed to be to the exact specifications of the original. We need to get the reception desk up in here. I'm not going to lie, this is good. You're now in what was once one of the finest rooms in all of Virginia, with elaborate oak carvings handcrafted by Blackhaven carpenters. Straight ahead is the grand staircase, matching the exact dimensions of the original. 
You might be wondering at this point what's under your feet. Below is one of the vaulted Blackhaven cellar rooms. You can explore the cellar in a later stop. The open spaces to the right likely held parlors for the Harwood family to relax together. Let's go through the doorway to the left, into the former Harwood dining room, where meals were brought from the kitchen every day. Operating an 18th century household was hard and thankless work, requiring cooking, cleaning, lighting fires, and managing staff. But according to Thomas's diary, his wife Sarah did so always with a smile. To see how Thomas showed his gratitude, head through the door to the outside. Yeah, Sarah must have really thrown her back out for everybody. But considering they do have servants, I wouldn't be surprised if she made them do some things. I don't think she would have worked that very hard. This was to the outside. Hmm, what is this? Oh, is this a kitchen? Or is this... Make your debut. Ah! So this is the ballroom. Harvest Ball at Blackhaven was one of the biggest events on the Virginian social calendar. Popular 18th century dances like the minuet were all the rage. Trying the minuet for yourself couldn't be easier. Just can this back to hear a sample tune and follow the steps below. For real? Um, would I even know where to actually go to? Oh, I think it's supposed to be for two people at least. So, uh, yeah. Ah, so this is the ballroom. Stop. This space was arguably the largest ballroom in the colony, outshining even the governor's mansion in Williamsburg. Thomas oh. built it for his wife, Sarah, who, although careful and pious, loved entertaining, especially at the annual Harvest Ball, a must-attend event for every Virginian. The impressive marble fireplace that kept dozens of dancing couples warm is one of the few fixtures to survive the Blackhaven fire. Thomas wrote regularly to General Washington throughout his life, which may explain this fireplace's similarity to one at Mount Vernon. If you're interested in trying to dance yourself, you can scan the bonus plaque to hear an 18th century minuet. Try your luck at dancing the pattern. Let's head down the stairs. I gotta start watching to see if people actually try to do this. So this one, and then we go down the stairs. So is this another path? Ah, this is the Defiant Gate. An enduring symbol of American perseverance, this surviving doorway became known as the Defiant Gate when it remained intact following the burning of Blackhaven. Due to damage from many decades, the current woodwork is a 20th century reproduction. Mm, let's see. The brick arch above has become known as the Defiant Gate because its majestic and haunting shape survived the Blackhaven fire. So popular with visitors that many would break off pieces to take home as souvenirs, oh, the no. elaborate oh. carved doorway you see now is actually a reproduction installed in 1954, though some still mistake it for the original. The gate has also hosted many weddings, and local superstition says no unmarried couple can pass through together, or their love will be forever broken. This legend may stem from Eleanor Harwood, who refused to dance with her fiancé in Blackhaven's ballroom before they were wed. In the spirit of freedom, we'll let you do as you please, but we are not responsible for any broken hearts. Head around to the rear side of the house, and look for the stairs to the cellar for the next stop. Don't worry, my mom will be trying to break off something else if I tried to get married here. 
Maybe they're in a familiar relationship, perhaps. So is this the seller? Well, so far it's easy to follow, which is good. What's this? Leave your mark. Um, inspired by. Uh, oh no! Someone did a someone did the thing. Um, why are they all eats? Um, back haven. Har was lucky eight. In this spirit, we invite. You to make your own mark and celebrate the perseverance of the Harwood family. Can we? Can we? Hmm. I guess not. I guess not. Hmm. This seller once stored alcohol from around the world for Blackhaven's extensive entertaining calendar. It survives largely as it would have during the 18th century with strong brick vaults supporting the weight of the house above. I knew it. She noticed. It's usually just the balls or the name. It's actually kind of impressive to get them both on one. <laughs> Thankfully, she actually did it. This is the one that looks closest to how it might have in 1781. The Harwood cellar stored all the beer, ale, and imported wine the family needed to entertain in the ballroom above. If you look up now, you can see the first level where we stopped before. You may also notice curious drawings on the cellar walls. Visitors to the Blackhaven ruins notice the central symbol, naming it Harwood's Lucky Eight, and the shape has come to represent the resilience of the Harwood family. Although Thomas loved codes and ciphers, we don't know who drew the original, and many subsequent tourists added their own variations. These are now oh, like this history one. and protected by glass, but you're welcome to add your own on our post-it wall. It really doesn't look like an eight, though. It seems that it might be something else altogether. And then just people vandalize. I wonder if we could. I don't think we can. And then the next one is the river view. So this is the cellar. I can't open that. So I guess we'll have to go up outside then. But at the very least we don't get trapped in the cellar, which would be very bad. Yes, that would be very bad. I'm guessing this is the river view. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, this charming view of the water has changed dramatically from the 18th century when an elaborate walled garden stood between the house and the river. Blackhaven also operated a private wharf on the shore to load shipments of its tobacco on vessels returning to Europe. Hmm. I get used to this view. Plantations like Blackhaven often had their own ports for shipping tobacco. Hmm, they were near the river. This rear side of the house was the front. Workers would roll down large barrels called hogsheads to be loaded into the tall ships bound for the Chesapeake Bay and out to the Atlantic. The distant riverbank is dotted with small creeks and inlets, including one shady pool that may have given Blackhaven its name. During the 19th century, a legend arose that Samuel Harwood had done business with pirates and had allowed them to bury their gold beneath one of the riverbanks. In hard times, treasure hunters can still be sometimes spotted, although now with metal detectors. One treasure we know existed was the spectacular walled garden that once stood between here and the river, full of exotic plants and flowers to support Thomas's study of botany. Now, let's head back inside. This time, take the stairs all the way to the top. They really need to do the garden next. Well, the garden doesn't exist anymore. 
So I don't think so. All right, so we're going to pop. So we're going up these stairs. Ah. I do like the their attention to detail on the sound here. It sounds like glass when you step on the glass. And then it sounds like you're on stone if you're on stone. We're never very fond of glass staircases though. It always seems like it's going to uh, this is the elevated walkway. So we're going to the observation deck, which is at the very top. We've never been fond of these kinds of staircases. They always look like they're going to break. So I suppose this is it. Hmm. This is the highest point in the Black Haven reconstruction, nearly five modern stories up, providing a commanding view of both the sheer scale of the original house and the surrounding lands. This glass platform is supported primarily by the cables attached on both sides. Cables? Primarily by cables? Hmm. Hmm. All right. So, if it became too heavy, either the glass would break or the wires would just give place, of course. Ooh, I can feel being up here in my stomach. From this observation deck, you can see the sheer size of the house, as not even the Harwood family ever could. And how about the view? Spectacular now. In the 18th century, this was simple attic space, storing house goods and overflow visitors. Workers at Black Haven did gossip about strange goings on in the attic, passing rumors of occult ceremonies and witchcraft. But while hmm. the entire Harwood family loved puzzles and secrets, there's no evidence of anything more witchy than a stray broom or two. When you're done admiring the view, head down the stairs to the second floor elevated walkway. Though part of me wants to see if I can make this rock back and forth. Never mind. Part of it. Mm, it might just give way. This is supported by cables. I don't think we want to die yet. Alright, so this is the elevated walkway. This glass elevated walkway is supported by both the main steel structure as well as braces anchored into the original brick. Its many viewpoints show the massive interior of the house from angles never available to the Harwoods. Right, because it's partly glass now, people could see a lot more of the house than the Harwoods ever did. Construction began with the clearing of centuries of rubble, not all of it from the 18th, as many locals had found the ruins to be a convenient dumping pit. Local legends told of Black Haven servants who were buried alive in the collapse, but no human remains were ever discovered. Once the rubble was cleared, architects repaired the brickwork and built the central steel structure to provide support for the glass panels. If you look at some sections, like the glass corner coming up on your left, you'll notice that many plates of glass are actually acting as support columns, maximizing the amount of light and visibility in this innovative restoration. But could you actually call it the restoration if it's like this, if it's of a different material? Hmm. 
Hmm, what's this one? We're supposed to do it. Balcony constructed almost entirely out of structural glass. This porch balcony provides a view of the main museum and the house grounds. The true size of the original estate was even larger, as shown in a recently discovered colonial guest She might as well. I'm not sure which high school this is supposed to be for. I'm pro dog though. Hmm. Huh. Field of Daisies. My grandma's name is Daisy. She would hate it here. I suppose any black person this would hate it here. Shows the expansive size of the Black Haven estate. From here to the museum was only the front yard, with the entire farm extending far beyond the tree lines to the left and right. The hundreds of acres included multiple villages of farmhands, as well as a carpentry, smithy, and gristmill, each with its own craftsmen. And we are still learning more about Blackhaven even in the 21st century. On the plaque below is a traveling visitor's map of the entire estate only recently discovered in the Library of Congress in 2006. Now continue back out and take a left into the Harwood bedroom. Oh dear. So it is big. So beyond the trees there, there, there was farmland. All right. <laughs> bedroom creepy I know it's creepy I'm I'm going to do it so this is the bedroom hmm. Hmm. so how far does the bedroom go so is it that whole thing hmm. there's a fireplace in the middle of it hmm. That's an odd look for a bedroom. Usually we would see bedrooms with like the fireplaces in on the side. But I guess this does allow for better heating, I guess. The second floor of Black Haven Hall consisted mainly of the ah bedrooms. Alright, so I suppose some of it might have been um separated. Including this one, believed to be the space Thomas Harwood shared with his wife, Clara. The bed on display is a surviving example of an 18th century design, which may have belonged to the Harwood family. Okay, my last day, I'm taking a nap here. Well, if, we, if she ever we lives sure, for it. But we believe this space was the master bedroom of Black Haven Hall. Where Thomas Harwood and his hmm. wife so they're not sure yet. Loving years together. You'll also notice some of the period furnishing on display, including this real 18th century bed, possibly owned by the Harwoods themselves. While the frame is intact, the fabric on display is a modern reproduction. Many hmm. visitors admire the bed curtains on these old pieces, but few know their true purpose. In addition to keeping warmth in and insects out, Bed curtains provided privacy between homeowners and any servants. After all, a man of Thomas's sterling reputation would never risk the embarrassment of running into a servant unexpectedly, especially in his honored bedroom. Now head out to the rear balcony overlooking the river for our next stop. Like they know what Thomas was getting up to in here. Doing, doing the deed, I suppose. So we're gonna, going to go here. Is this it? Battle? Ah, there we go. The battle. Uh, Thomas Harwood was standing near this exact spot when he first spotted the British ship that would per precipitate the 1781 Battle of Black Haven. The Harwood family and a group of farmhands valiantly defended the house with, with small musket fire 
but were forced to abandon Black Haven when British shelling set fire to the home. The incredible blaze completely destroyed the structure, which lay in ruins until this restoration. You are now standing in the same spot as Thomas Harwood during the most harrowing night of his entire life, the Battle of Black Haven. After British General Cornwallis landed in Virginia in 1781, Thomas had worried about the threat of raids and even turned down an invitation to join General Washington in Williamsburg choosing instead to stay behind and defend the private river homes. Finally, one fateful night, Thomas spotted the tall mast of a British ship over the trees through his spyglass. British agents came ashore, attempting to seek a peaceful surrender and forage. But according to Sarah's later account, brave farm workers fired warning shots before they could even reach the garden. The rest of the family and staff barricaded themselves in the house, with muskets pointing down from every window. Lucky seven-year-old Elizabeth Harwood even risked life and limb to drape an American flag over the balcony, possibly the one now hanging in the museum. As nightfall approached, the British commanders lost their patience and trotted out small cannon and mortars to begin shelling the house. Cannonballs okay. likely hit Black Haven's walls, although later damage has made it difficult to tell, and aerial shells exploded terrifically in the air. Shrapnel from one bomb apparently broke an attic window and ignited a stack of linens, and Blackhaven was officially ablaze. The Harwoods and their servants fired back furiously, but the British waited for the flames to run their course. As the house filled with smoke, Thomas resolved to stay and become a true martyr for liberty, but Sarah pleaded with him to flee, assuring him that he could not help the new nation as a ghost. The family abandoned the raging fire and escaped into the night. Although we don't know for sure if the legend of Farmer Joe venturing into the burning house to save family heirlooms is true, crucial objects from the house do survive in our museum, whether they were carried or have been stowed away for safekeeping days before. What is certain is that the fire, which later spread to the nearby kitchen and stables, was final and marked a patriot defeat and the end of Blackhaven Hall. Now... Head back to the ground level, take a left, and continue to the site of the formal library. That's a lot of patriotism for one family getting their house burned down. That's way too much. They even have an hour-by-hour -hour breakdown of the whole event. Which they're not even completely sure of. Alright, so I should go down go out and in towards the left. Well, wow, this is a big tour. Hopefully I don't get stuck in here. All right. So this left? Library, library. So far, it's easy to follow. I'm just not sure where it is. Hmm. Is this it? All right. Hmm. So this is the library. All right. Built along with the ballroom in Thomas Harwood's 1770 expansion of Black Haven Hall, the library that once stood on the site had the largest private collection of books in all the American colonies. Along with scientific instruments and natural speci specimens, the collection served as the inspiration for many of Harwood's great intellectual achievements. Oh, the most interesting room, and this is all they've got to show. Well, books are want to burn down. It's heartbreaking to believe that this was once the greatest library in all of the young United States. Filled with hundreds of leather-bound books, scientific instruments, and exotic animal and mineral specimens, 
the Blackhaven Library was designed by Thomas himself. His collection dwarfed even Thomas Jefferson's, and had it survived, Blackhaven's books, not Monticello's, might have been the basis for the Library of Congress. Hmm. Plus two were Thomas's brilliant journals, some reportedly written in code, full of observations and experiments that might have rivaled Ben Franklin's. Little of the structure remains, possibly because the books here fueled an even hotter fire. The fire of Thomas Harwood's life was soon to burn out. Nearly a year after the battle, he began to suffer again from a mysterious illness that had plagued him for years. He finally succumbed to the disease and was buried with honor in Williamsburg before a massive crowd of patriots. Thomas's unexplained death spawned rumors of a poisoning, and even that Sarah had drugged Thomas after he had discovered a secret affair. Well, modern historians have found evidence only of a loving marriage and theorize that local Tories may have spread the rumors to discredit Thomas. His life now shines as an example to every American, a patriot who loved his wife and his country. You can now head down the stairs and to the left to the final plaque along the trail. They used a lot of ifs for Thomas in that one. Hmm. That is kind of suspicious. I mean... I mean, why is he forgotten if he's all... if he's this great? That's what I'm wondering. Hmm. So this is the farewell sign. Hmm. Following the fire, the Blackhaven estate was purchased by Thomas Harwood's brother, William Harwood, who later built nearby Oakmont Plantation, still the home of the Harwood dynasty. The Blackhaven Hall Historical Society thanks you for visiting and honoring the memory of our nation's founding. It's not like he single-handedly did Last it. Last one. Let's get back and get some lunch. This is the final stop in our audio tour. We recommend you head back to the museum using the left trail. Blackhaven Hall was never to be rebuilt as Thomas had vowed that the ruins stand forever as a monument to British treachery. Sarah and her daughter Elizabeth went to live with family in Maryland before hmm. she eventually remarried. Hmm. Thomas she remarried Harwood, a farmer and Episcopal minister, eventually purchased most of the estate from Sarah. A few miles down the road, he built his own new grand home at Oakmont, named for the small tree-covered hill nearby. Oakmont's foundations were built by dismantling the Blackhaven lawn and garden walls to make use of the bricks. Huh. Oakmont lacked the imposing size and grandeur of Blackhaven Hall, but the Harwoods continued their commitment to defending liberty and free enterprise for every American. Although their loyalties to their not exactly for every American defend against the Union in the Civil War, the nation mended its divisions and ventured into the 20th century even stronger. Now the family is arguably more famous for Harcourt Industries, a global economic juggernaut, but their story of American success began right here, in the humble fields of Blackhaven. This concludes the Blackhaven audio tour. If you haven't already, be sure to visit our galleries and to pick up something for this special patriot in your life at our gift store. Oakmont Plantation, still the current residence of the sixth generation of the Harwood family, is open for scheduled tours the first and third weekends of every month. And don't forget, both Blackhaven and Oakmont are available for weddings, anniversaries, and corporate events. We hope you enjoy the rest of your visit and find your own ways to honor the memory of our founding fathers. As Thomas Harwood once wrote, liberty is entrusted only to them who will work for it. Goodbye. Um, pretty sure there were some people working here who didn't get their liberty. But were they working for liberty? That's the question. That's the question. Did they ever actually... 
But then again, yeah, he, he made it seem like it's kind of, it has the same energy, it has the same vibes as if you work for it, you'll get it. Or as long as you keep working for it, you'll reach your dreams. And I, I don't agree with the description that it is a humble plantation. No plantation is humble. If it's a small family farm, that's humble. But if it's a plantation, I, I don't think so. I don't think, I mean, if they're already well, well off like that, I don't think it's humble anymore. No, this is such a slow walk. Can I even run? Oh, I can. Okay. I should have done that. I should have done that. But then again, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't see the, I wouldn't feel anything if I just rushed through. Hmm. And it loads quite slowly as well. <laughs> That's as good as Blackhaven lunch gets. Probably should get started on my last task. Audio tour is done, so the only thing left is, ugh, document scanning in the archive. Well, I better head over. Shouldn't we? Oh, not again. Good afternoon. Thanks for calling Blackhaven Hall. This is Kendra speaking. How may I help you? Oh, hello, Kendra. Thank you so much for taking my call. I just had a couple tiny little questions about the wedding option. So All right. we're considering a date in September. We're gonna have a ceremony on the lawn. It's a great big oak tree. It's a view of the river. Why are you inquiring about this by call? You should You should do it online. Sorry, ma'am. Blackhaven Hall is a large brick 18th century mansion. Oh, honey. I know Blackhaven. I just mean, like, when we went to have the Killian and Shady Grove Plantation, they had those cute little cabins in a row out back. Wait a minute. Um, do you mean the slave cabins? Oh, well, I mean, no, I don't think so. You know, we just thought it would be fun. You thought it would be fun for you and your girls to put your feet up in a slave cabin? I'm not busy. So thank you so much, my dear. God bless. That was rude. It was already jarring enough to... Alright, so for the 18, 9, and 6. Um, Alright. It was already jarring enough. to have someone call on a holiday in a slave cabin and she thought it was cute it's already tone deaf enough to have events at this sort of place And to have that kind of demand.
It's the same reading room. Director. Alright. So we should probably go to the reading room, I guess. So we need those documents. There's the scanning station. Now I have to go find the right box from the archive. Looks like I need okay. Thomas first. Okay. I'll leave that there for now. For reference. I am glad that she took the paper. So this is the archive. Uh, at the very least, this one is just lock and key. Alright. Thomas Hollywood papers. How do we even know which one is which? Hmm. Not sure which collection is in which box. Maybe there's a reference around here somewhere. Hmm. We have a tendency to misspell some of huh. things. Huh. Check this pattern. Oh. These are so much more interesting than the ones in the case. Why hmm. are these on display? Now we wonder. Wait. Oh my god. Are those? Oh dear. That chilled me. Ah, okay, there we go. Here we go. This list has which collection which is, one is in which number? So we should go for two. Ah, uh, the three. Right? So I guess this is it. Yeah. Ah, alright. So she did take it out already. Okay, got the folder. Let me go scan this. Right. Yes, Thomas Hardwood Papers Folder 18. All right. So we should scan these. Ah, so this is where it gets... Since this is the back end of everything, this is actually where it, where we find out everything. Alright. Okay, Helen wants me to check every page top to bottom before scanning. These are always typed up, though, so I don't have to read Thomas's handwriting. I've seen worse. Hmm. Oh, six of luck and eight bread and butter for breakfast. I read two chapters on optics and also what's that? Mm -hmm. in French? Mm -hmm. All morning I walked about the plantation and looked over the tobacco fields. In the afternoon I took Elizabeth to the wall. the walled garden and observe her lessons. Sarah says my young daughter reads well and is quite curious. I showed her a row of uncommonly colored cabbages I had planted and the notes I had taken on their cultivation. Elizabeth was enchanted with their beautiful leaves and resolved to discover how best they grow. 
We made plans in a chart to record diverse am amounts of rainfall, sunlight, temperature, and types of soil. Just as the fruits of the garden, she grows more, more grows more lovely each day, but she too will require advantageous conditions. A watchful eye and a gentle hand will nurture best without oppressing the spirit. Much as our American nation once grew strong under the kind gaze of our mother country, I ate a very fine roast beef for dinner. In the evening, Sarah played the new piano for the girls, and I read in the law. Oh, oh dear. Hmm. It's odd. Ah. Well, here goes. Time for the genius of the founding father. It's it was poetry. Right, it was typed up. <laughs> I shouldn't have. Uh, a young daughter reads for colored, colored colleges. I entered and was I taken on obligation. Ah, there. Um, for. That's me. I don't know what I'm Ah, so this one. This is the next one then. I rose after six o'clock and ate milk in Paris for breakfast. I, ate, I read stories from Ovid and the scriptures in Hebrew. In the morning, Sarah wished to entertain our guests from the previous night, but I greatly preferred my time alone. My time alone? Hmm. My wife is a good woman and maintains friendship with our many kind relations. In the afternoon, I went again to the garden to meet Elizabeth to oversee her arithmetic. I found her weeping, and that the finest of our cabbages had been removed by some mischievous creature. I related to her that as the master of a plantation, many unexpected events occur, and that is often only providence which chooses between bounty and blight. We shared a tender embrace, and she returned to her studies, and I praise her penmanship and steady hand. Elizabeth already exhibits so many qualities of her mother and I, not the least of her great cleverness. With her talent, she may one day find a match even more prominent than that of her sister Eleanor. I had mutton for dinner and jelly for dessert. In the evening, Sarah read fables to Elizabeth while I studied chess. So genius is mostly just breakfast comics, apparently. Apparently, yeah. Hmm. I arose at three o'clock at the sound of a great thunderstorm. It raged with such ferocity and frequency of lightning that I could have been seen clearly to walk within the house without the use of a candle. Despite her independence, Elizabeth ran to my room, as I did not want to make wake her mother. I read to her softly in my bed. She had asked for a fairy tale so many times. I had already turned the page from habit. But zealous of her new learning, she insisted I read instead for her father's business. We took a copy of Palladio's archite architecture from a night table, and together read it word by word, as her little hands dutifully turned each page. She pointed to the, the intricate plates and had me name each feature, saving none, and repeated the features of each ornamented column, window, and door. I became lost in my own speech for on how I had put such principles to practice in Blackhaven. When I saw that she had fallen fast asleep at my side, the storm had subsided and the robins were singing. But it was still hours from dawn, so I carried her carefully and set her back in her bed. 
and kiss her cheek as he, she dreamt of tall towers. I guess Thomas does seem gentle with kids, though he put this one to sleep. <laughs> this is going to be a long read. <laughs> All right. Uh, I arose at 7 o'clock and ate milk and rice for breakfast. I reviewed my notes on the effect of the wound on tobacco worms and read on the history of Egypt and Herodotus. I rode out to the westernmost farm to talk with the overseer and examine his corn. When I saw Black Pompey ride out on Cyrus' own horse greatly distressed. Hmm. He especially noted Black. He informed me that Elizabeth could not be found in the house, and her mother was restless over her safety. I rode back with haste to meet my wife, who said Elizabeth had abandoned her studies in the garden, neglecting her book of arithmetic in the grass. When I came to the scene, I noticed that now two more of her treasured cabbages were missing, which made me newly suspect that the thief was no animal. At the river, Garden River Gate had been left open. I took Pompey and Sam with me to look along the river banks. Not an hour into her search, I found her crossing through the bush, through the brush without a care. I forgot for all her knowledge she is still a child, innocent of the world even after six years. She told me that she had gone looking for cabbage to replace with that which she had lost, thinking it might grow wild like Sunday berries the Negroes picked. Hmm. Thinking of her poor mother's kindly nature, I was first full of anger, but I quaced when I thought of Elizabeth's hearty spirit. She had run off not to lazily disregard her lessons, but to preserve her work in the garden. I hugged her and forgave her in that moment. To encourage such, such industriousness, as I always endeavored to teach, for dinner, I ate fish, and I slept early after only a chapter of botany. She really got lost looking for lettuce in the forest. Poor Pompey getting dragged along and all her white girl nonsense. I wonder if it ever warns you if you haven't scanned the page yet. Hmm. August 28, I arose before 6 o'clock and ate bread and butter for breakfast. I read my Bible and said my prayers for patience and generosity. In the morning, after settling my accounts in my office, I walked back to the garden. Now that the unseemly matter with the cabbages have been resolved, Elizabeth had moved to her next fancy in astronomy. I took her to the dial and explained the path of the earth around the sun the globe's angle and the seasons, and I promised to show her my orrery in the library by candlelight. How thankful I am for such movements between parent and child. It's truly by such kind meetings that our family prospers. Wait, the matter with the cabbages got resolved? Is there a page missing? Hmm. That's odd. Hmm. Put this back in the box. So what's the next one? Folder nine. What what was that? Anna Harwood. Folder nine. Hmm. Gotta find the shelf where this box goes. I suppose this is here. Mostly breakfast comments. The next folder. I can look at my instructions in the reading room or the collections index if I need to. 
Anna Harvard, Anna Harvard, number nine. This is it. Okay, got the folder. Let me go scan this. So now, number nine folder I am. All right. Hmm. There we go. Place the document and read closely. Okay, I'm next safe. Let's read about this scary looking couple. Hmm. Now, Harwood Papers, Volume 4. Correspondence from the Oakmont Library of the Harwood family. Hannah Harwood and Gideon Harwood. Why is this picture like that? It's scary. Duff Haven Hall Historical Society, February 1967. Oh, do we need to zoom in? I suppose she doesn't have any comments about this. Right. So this would be the first letter something. Well, was he the just handwriting is a lot of work. I shouldn't talk, knowing basically no cursive. Hmm. I wonder if they're not taught cursive anymore. Okay. I suppose I should move to the next one. Hmm. 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 Anna's handwriting is a lot neater, but still hard to read. These are the transcriptions, I suppose. All right, so Gideon Harwood to Anna Harwood. May 17, 1862. My dearest Anna, this will be the first letter you receive and first that has gone out to post since my enlistment. I write to currently from the light of my write to currently from the light of my campfire after a march of twelve miles. I now realize that the job of a soldier is to march more than to fight. I miss you terribly. I know our cause is true, but I cannot help wishing to see you and our boy in every moment. No matter the direction of compass, north, east, west, east, or south, I know all is but a long journey back to hold your poor little hand. And so every step I take is a step towards you. It has become apparent to me that for all the skills of a southern gentleman, some of the other officers have not slept even a single night under the stars. Although some of my rank have scorned me for not partaking in the officer's mess, I have one great cheer for my hominy porridge. I owe it primarily to tricks from old Silas. I reckon that tired me mm -hmm. may be cleverer than half the lot and most any yank. I know it means black in uh, some other languages, though I'd rather not say it for for reasons. Gideon got it, himself stuck out in the cold because he just couldn't give up those slaves. Mm -hmm. We do hear rumors of engagements day to day, but so far I have seen no action. I know you think that I am a hard man, and I will grant that I have never feared a day's real work nor the heat, nor the cold. There were many weak and venal men in our family line, and I have always worked to earn a, an eternal rest as a faithful servant. Nevertheless, I do fear the violence to come. Men full of whiskey boast and swear by firelight of how we're to whip the enemy, but not even the most enthusiastic papers can disguise that many of us will not return home. Yours always, Gideon.
And this is the one from Anna, I guess. Anna Harwood, do you get it in Harwood? June 11, 1862. Gideon, my darling, you are a strong man. You know, so many boys came calling to me, and I had no use for the foppish manners. You were always silent and true. My great oak, stronger than a hurricane, gentle in the breeze. Mm, such poetry. You're learning so fast, but your proud wife is just as quick as study. I am so thankful now that father always kept up in form of our accounts and harvests. He remembered his mother's ingenuity as a widow and would not allow his daughters to go without the same. We do worry about getting the tobacco to market, but you are wise to plant more wheat in recent years. Some ours may even reach your camp for wheat. The darkies, darkies ask about the war, but I believe they fear Yankees pillaging more than their steady masters. Of course, Emily and Charlotte have run off together, but each did the same before the war, and I know they'll return on to their infernal. Oh dear. Such terms. Who knew such words could be so violent? Kin, when their taste for adventure runs dry. Oh, how I wish all the plot were as loyal as Henry. So carries on running the house and the kitchen when I cannot. He'd not run to the Yankees once in ten lifetimes. Like our son who fears a fall but will take his first steps to his mother, fear not as you take every step back towards me. We fight for liberty. Whose liberty exactly? It doesn't seem to be for everyone, considering you called, you just called black people infernal. That's sad. Hmm. Fight for liberty, be it against foreign tyrants or northern pretenders. And surely the good Lord in his infinite justice will deliver you to me. Well, not if you're like that, though. Shall keep in my private thoughts what plans I have for us when he does. A resourceful wife to a brave husband, man. Hmm. Such bravery. Shut your mouth, Anna. Emily and Charlotte better keep running. They better. This is what they were hiding. Weren't they? Right. So this is the Gideon Harwood to Anna Harwood, July 19th of 1864. My dearest Anna, I know that you have received word of my condition and my time in the hospital. I wanted to ease your tender heart, but now I am able to write from mine and tell you everything I could not dictate to the nurse. I had written to you about my first taste of the battlefield, which passed up without much incident as we stayed behind with the artillery. But three weeks ago, the bugle finally sounded for your husband, and I found myself charging across the field. I cannot describe the sensation adequately. There's tremendous noise, but so there always is. There is the whiz of the balls as they cut through the air. There is dirt and smoke, and cries of anger and anguish. But in the tumult, what I felt most deeply was the nervous sense of my nakedness. No barricade, no ditch. No country stone fence, only my stained gray wall between me and my maker. I am ashamed to say I was terrified. With each step I took on my frightful path, I felt less and less the master of my body. It was at this moment that I felt my leg give up. It was as if some animal had pulled me down and hit the grass with all my weight. I was alert and aware, but I could not open my right leg. I looked down and saw a ball had struck me and split upon my shin bone and blown me wide open. I could not sop up the blood with my torn trousers, which were already soaked in bread, and I pressed hard to stay the bleeding and wince as I felt my bare bone against my dirty palms. In anguish I crawled just behind the safety of an awl, and somehow removed my coat just to tie it tight around my wound and lay back in the grass. Hmm. So he managed to uh, 
try and st staunch it. It's so crazy to think about all this violence and chaos. And then every museum is such a quiet place. And museums are very eerily quiet. That's all. Yeah. And the cursor really does have a problem in this game. It's not much of a game as it is a core against the one. Can you hear what the Anahar were? Ah, continued. Even amidst the terrible din, the world quieted. I could see only the blue sky and the white clouds and the nearby treetops, and I felt the heat of the sun. The same as when we lay in the grass on Sunday picnics. I began to feel light in the head. I suppose these were my last moments on earth. I should have made my confession, but instead I prayed your sweet name on my lips over and over. I thought of your hair resting light on the pillow. I thought of how you skipped through the garden. I thought of our boy, grown tall and strong, and walking with me in, in the ruins of the old house. Hearing the tales of great patriots and savage Indians, like my father told. We should say Native Americans, though, because they're not, it's not exactly clear. And even then, it would kind of be. Yeah. But most of all, I watched the treetops sway. I thought perhaps if I must leave this earth, my spirit could follow you in breeze. Raising your cheek and whispering furtively in your ear of my eternal love. I have more to tell, but weak as I am, my strength fades quickly. My pain lessens each day, but my gratitude remains constant. I thank heaven and earth I was here again. Yours forever, Gideon. Gideon seems more pleasant than a lot of these people, but definitely racist. He does, though. He does. At least. Hmm. Anna Harwood to Gideon Harwood, September 2nd, 1864. Gideon, my most loving husband, my love for you is just as eternal. You doubt yourself because you are so humble and true. You are no coward. Your wounds testify to your bravery. I'm certain deep in the mind of every man on the field are your same fear. But there are many who would not leave the charge. Indeed, there are many who would not even answer the call. You may dwell in your sadness, but I am giddy at the thought of your kind and handsome face. Mm. The photograph was a little scary, though. Oh, how I wish I could be there to cheer you. I would come in such a pretty dress and smile and sing, and read to you, and compose a sonnet in your honor. I would make the hospital into a ballroom, just as the one where we met, and show you so much affection that every pair of jealous eyes would be on me. But mine would, would be only on you. Whatever may happen, do not mourn your body. My fine oak will not be diminished even by the loss of a branch. It'd be nothing like poor Henry, though he still manages to bring my breakfast up the stairs each day with his awful limp. Hmm. Imagine forcing some to, someone to work, even when they already have that kind of disability. You are a man of letters, the head of a fine and ancient family, thick with friends and rich in my love. How can we despair while our, while our affections endure with even greater love, Pam? All right, I'm not going to lie. These two are really feeling each other. Ease up on Henry, though. Oh, true. She didn't need to mention Henry, to be honest. Ah, this is not even the last page. Alright. Alright. Anna Harwood to Gideon Harwood, April 5th, 1864. My only Gideon, it has taken me weeks, but I must write to you even though you will never read it. You lay now in some spot of cold earth. The officer who delivered the news could not even say it was written where. But my heart knows, because it is there every day and every night. Oh, Gideon, the light has gone out of my life. 
from my earliest years, I was prepared to be a wife and mother. In a youth, I could have taken the hand of any man, man in the state. But when I saw you, I knew I would never entertain another suitor. Our boy now say, says my name, and I tell him yours and show him your picture. He will never know what it means to truly look on your sweet face, but he will know your image and your deeds. News came recently of our surrender and the death of our newly free nation. But it troubles me not, because all my aspirations have died with you. Many of the servants have stayed back to continue on their farms. After all, they know nothing else. Hmm. That's a bad way to put it. Nor are they suited to live without supervision. If my heart were al not already broken beyond repair, it would have pained me to see a smiling Henry riding away in a new young wagon. But it was only now a small slight. Hmm. Oh, how I curse Yankee arrogance and pride. They have undone my world. They have turned what is true upside down and still not content. The damned animals have taken you from me. I would wipe ten thousand of them from the earth in a bloody instant. And not feel the slightest pang of remorse. You were worth them all, my precious love. I promise you I will never remarry. I know you are... Come to think of it, only Sarah remarried, I think. I know you're so kind. You would wish me another warm bed, but I will not take it. I will live my days with a cool temper and a cold resolve. I dedicate my efforts to never forgetting our cause or, or our sacrifice. Hmm. She's doing the Black's dirty, it seems. Anne Harwood to Gideon Harwood, April 5th, 1864, continued. My only solace is that, being so close to death before, you were able to relate to me the true depths of your love. I pray that you were given the chance to say my name as you expired, because I say yours each night when the darkness comes for me. When my eyes close, it's yours so forever. I cannot realize my any joy, but believe me, my dears, I feel you in the breeze. Anna is so awful, but I can still feel her loss. Why couldn't she feel anything for somebody like me? She doesn't regard you as anyone human. That's why. Better put this back in the box. So the good shop. We still have one more box to go. Okay, gotta find the shelf where this box goes. All right, so let's... I'm guessing it would be somewhere with a brown box as well. Ah, there, there we go. Ready for Ease the up. next folder. Ease I can look up. at my instructions in the reading room or the collections index if I need to. Alright, so what do we need? Archaeological reports folder 6. Archaeological reports. Let's see if that's the correct box. Fourteen. All right, it is. Okay, got the folder. Let me go scan this. That's right, right. It's folder six. It's so hard to this. All right. What is this supposed to be? It's supposed to be the cursor isn't doing very well. 
Blackhaven Hall, summary report of battlefield and barn excavation. By Clarence Conway, John Rawlings, Stephen Armistead, Virginia Archeolo Archaeological Consultant. Uh, this one seems more boring. Oh, might as well. Might as well. Hmm. These excavations aim to establish an archaeological understanding of the 1781 Battle of Black. While surviving historical sources recount the attack, particularly in the Journal of Rebecca Harwood, there has to be, there has to this point been little physical evidence from the battle. The earliest mention in the historical record comes from the Virginia Gazette, approximately two weeks after the events in question, which quoted Thomas and Sarah Harwood. All accounts are consistent that the British troops landed at Black Haven's private wharf and exchanged small musket fire with the Harwoods and their servants before shelling the main house with small cannon and mortars, eventually igniting a fire. Rebecca Harwood's, Rebecca Harwood's later 1824 diary also mentions a second skirmish, an exchange of small arms fire from servants barricaded inside of a nearby tobacco dyeing, drying barn. The barn itself continued in use until the late 1880s, when it was demolished after the construction of a replacement closer to the Oakmont plantation. With these accounts in mind, strategic excavations were conducted at five sample sites, two near the main house facing the river, and three at the likely sites of British and American positions near the former barn. Former barn, I suppose. Earlier of metal detectors looking for traces of iron and lead ordnance shot informed the choice of sites. I bet that military weirdo from earlier would love this. All right. Uh, excavations at size 1 and 2 focus on recovering mortar shrapnel, musket balls, or cannon shot. Thus, no, thus far, no such materials have been found. Much of the recovered material site 2 was related to food production, likely from the daily carrying of meals from the freestanding kitchen, uh, free kitchen building to the main house dining room. Artifacts recovered from site 1 were more varied but less intact and are suggested perhaps of an informal garbage pit. Some pottery shards from Site 1 suggest primary usage for much earlier periods in the late 17th or early 18th century. Hmm. That's odd. They didn't even get anything. After all that searching, could it could it have been something else instead? They never found any bullets from the entire battle? Yeah, were they were they in the wrong place? They could have had further searching. You know, I believe that something else happened here. And not a battle, per se. Sites 3 and 4, barn. Excavations near the site of the tobacco drying barn focus again on the search for militaria. Some surviving accounts had made reference to barricades or even more formal redoubts, so attention was paid to ground variations potentially left by fortified embankments, embankments or ditches. Picking up potential sites revealed again no evidence of a military engagement, but did recover post holes Another soil evidence of between five and small timber structures. Although these are not mentioned in the surviving accounts of the skirmish, this appears to be the nearest slave quarters for tobacco laborers and some house servants, the location referred to as the near quarter in Tom Thomas Harwood's surviving journal. Taking revealed a variety of everyday and agricultural art objects far less glass and porcelain than found at the house sites, but more colonoware fragments, including a few with distinctive decorative markings and iron goods like horseshoes and nails, 
Ah, like the ones in the team. One truly notable recovery for, for potential gallery display are the remains of a very fine, important porcelain teapot, which almost certainly was owned by the Harwood family rather than any of the slave families living in the party. But why? That's my question, actually, why? And there was a servant in the painting who had a teapot. I wonder if she was the one and if that was that teapot. Porcelain and fragment site for a teapot. Alright. Hmm. I think that one... I don't think I can read anything from that one. On a mutual agreement of both the fire and the... Ah, uh, both the firm and the BHHS, digging at site 5 was suspended. Hmm. Which was site five again? What was all that drama about? Well, she did say scan all the pages. We're not even. Hmm. Additional analysis was conducted on surviving artifacts owned by the Black Haven Hall Historical Society and the Harwood family. In particular, a set of musket balls from the 19th century collection of Anna Harwood. Using the taxonomy for early American ordinance established by Johnston, Lillian et al., 18, 1968, page 18, it appears clear that the musket balls do not resemble any in common use by either American or British forces during the Revolutionary era. Hmm. So did they fake all this then? The caliber and quality of the shots suggest instead that they are from an earlier matchlock musket of the late 17th or early 18th century, most likely the type used for hunting geese or other fowl. Similarly, the brass gorget, said to have been abandoned by a dying British officer, clearly dates from the era of George II and could not have been a relic of the Battle of Blackhaven. It is, however, consistent in similarity to British forces active in the Seven Years' War. It may be possible to connect to the expedition led by Colonel George Washington in the Fort Necessity campaign. Yes, one more scan and I'm all done. That's rather suspicious. Hmm. So after Never this, it's open. Alright, so this is 14. Okay, gotta find the shelf where this box goes. And I wonder why. Do we take a look at it? That's not. I suppose not. I suppose we shouldn't. Well, I did all the pages I can find. And it's almost time to close. Better head over to Helen's office and drop off my key. Oh, wait. I keep forgetting that it's R to exit. Hmm. That's very suspicious, though. 
So this is the director's office, I suppose. Okay, Helen said to leave the key in the top desk drawer. Top desk drawer. I suppose I'll, uh... Ah, this one. Archive key goes back. Huh. I wonder if this goes to that old file cabinet. I'm gonna go try it. We do have cameras on us, though. Oh, Helen had her computer on sleep. Hmm. Hi, Deborah. Thanks for having us right. Uh, stopping the museum all by herself tomorrow. Mm, right dress anyway. And I'd hate for someone to be intimidated by all the traditions. Plus, we don't need anyone tattling on Steve if he gets handsy after a couple of drinks. So, if there's sexual harassment in in that event, you don't want people talking about it. Why? I have to admit, I was a little skeptical about taking on one of these HBCU girls after the amazing job Catherine did last year. It was I was just so nice to have another girl sister prep, prep grad on staff. But Kendra helps us score a few diversity points, and with that scholarship program, the only thing better than interns working for free is having the schools pay us. I'm so excited to see you tomorrow. Make my punch a double. I won't tell if you don't. All right, Helen. I see how it is. That's disturbing. That's very disturbing. Wait, we won't be able to get in there past five. Hmm. It's so white. So why are we really going to risk it? I suppose so. <laughs> she did say she wanted to try it. We might as well have her try it and be fired, I suppose. She's basically an intern anyway. It's not like it's going to... Hmm. Just one folder. Wait, this is the missing page from Thomas's journal. Why have they got this locked up in the corner? over to the scanner and check it out. What else might be in here? Oh dear. It's a secret file. What do you know? Huh? Alright. Let's see what it is. Maybe some of the other missing pages are in here. It seemed that there were some things missing. Alright. So August 27th. I arose after 6 o'clock and ate only milk for breakfast. I read in geometry and wrote to our neighbors about the news from Philadelphia. In the morning, I went to see the first leaves cut and hung to be dried in the barn. In my walk through the nearest quarter, I was occasioned with a shock. When what I what did I see but all three of Elizabeth's missing cabbages growing rudely in garden? I found Joseph in the field and had him pull the culprit away from her duties. And he brought a rather uncomely wench, oh dear, named Patty. She feigned ignorance as to how such a marvelous specimen could be found replanted in her homely pot. When just then her girl Sally ran up to confess she had dug out the cabbages to help her mother, claiming that after a day in the fields, the indolent creature had no time to mind the garden and cook for it. Oh no. My temper justly rose, and I considered beating the girl for not even a gentle fool, 
can be broken to the saddle without the lash. But her mother pleaded so that I saw the wisdom of it. It was Patty being fully grown who deserved punishment for neglecting to train her child. So I had her whip in full view of the girl and fed the cabbage to the pigs to show how thoroughly it had been spoiled by leniency. As the base thievery had soured my afternoon, I took a nap on the window couch before dinner boiled beef and asparagus. In the evening, my mirth returned when Sarah played the piano. Thomas was sketchy, but this is messed up. Did someone take this out to make him look better? Probably so. Ah, these were newspaper excerpts. Oh, it's William, Thomas's brother. He had to be jealous of his brother's hair. <laughs> All right. Uh, compiled for the Black Haven Hall Historical Society. For why is it here? Why is it here? Hmm. Oh dear. Oh dear. Ten dollars reward. Run away from the subscriber. Subscriber on the twelfth of this instant. My man Joshua, he is about five feet and six inches high. About twenty six years of age. He formerly belonged to Richard Drew. And he may be lurking around his farm in Norfolk County. We had a wife and daughter when he was purchased. Oh dear. Human trafficking, right? Old human trafficking, aka slavery. Mm, same before, it's not ill treated. Above reward, will, it's like it's like looking for a lost dog or a lost cat. You know, imagine advertising this kind of thing for a person, as if they were some pet. Who ran away? Santa's mm, up by some tournament. Red wool coat, brass buttons, and a silver buckle for his trousers. Oh dear. Mm. Oh dear. Calling someone a mulatto. Holy moly. Uh, all right. I don't know, William. Why would Stephen run? I mean, Joshua was only sold away from his family. Hmm. And Hannah was branded and missing an ear. Oh. And William is the minister? How much time do I have? What else had these Black Haven people hidden away in here? What do you Before I can continue even another word, I... Secret letters from Gideon and poor racist Anna. I hope they took these out because of adult content. All these awful people could at least spill a little tea from them. <laughs> if only it was... If only it was uh, adult content. My dearest Anna, before I can continue even another word, I must tell you to keep this letter a secret as long as you live. In truth, it would be best for you to burn it, right? but I know you well enough to suspect you would never agree to such terms. My story does not begin with sorrow. In truth, I was recently rejoicing, as I had recuperated enough to leave behind my hospital bed and take my first steps. My gait is uneven and painful, but I must thank our Lord for the surgeon and the nurses, for each considers my walking to be evidence of his miracles. As I slowly recovered, I wished to return to duty, but I was no longer fit to march with the hot, healthy boys. Still, I begged and received the post, a guard in our camp, which was still vulnerable to Yankee raids. Even through my pains, it felt sweet to hold a rifle and keep my post and once again serve my fellow countrymen. 
two weeks after my new position, some four companies of our men met the enemy in a fierce battle. Fierce little battle, not even five miles from camp. And all day the wooden were brought back to the hospital, and with each round came also Union prisoners. Short of rations as we were already, we worried about feeding the captives and made them to sit in a cattle pen in a clearing where they could do no mischief. I could not have prepared for what my eyes would see next. A full band of the, a dozen of junk head troop contraband fill but dated to the regular Union infantry. Oh dear. Those words, though. At first sight, these black rascals look no more at ease in uniform than... Oh dear, such words. As the shock subsided, we began debating what to do. Their presence so inflamed the tempers of every good rebel that we could not put them with the white union men or have the whole lot torn to pieces in a riot. Instead, I and another handful of guards marched them a few hundred yards into the nearby woods. Each of us were filled with contempt for these treacherous... Mm. And some in our party even stooped to hurling insults at the beasts, who looked back calmly at us as if deaf and dumb. I wish I could tell you, true that our prisoners provoked us, but it is not the case. One of our men, unannounced and inflamed with passion, pulled out his pistol and shot one clean in the head. He fell and his brain spilled out on the ground, his blood leaked onto the boots of his companions. At least now some of the... Mm -hmm. Belt yelled and begged, some dropped to their knees, but there was no saving them. We each in a fury shot the rest, without thinking or speaking to one another. At least one of them I killed all alone. I shot him straight in the chest and saw the stain spread out through his coat until the life left his eyes. It was an awful scene, a slaughter, but they did not bleat like lambs. They looked at us with terror and disdain. I have seen so many fall in the field in the commotion of war, but this was different. Truly, it was criminal. Silently, in our relief and in our guilt, we came back with shovels and dug shallow trench to bury them. The men went through their pockets to claim their effects, and one dropped a fine silver case in the dust. I retrieved it and opened up to a daguerreotype, lifting what must have been this man's plump back. Wow! So you had the desire for this one? Princess was a free woman. It was in this moment I was overcome with guilt, for I could see only Bessie back at Oatmont, who raised me and my sister, who nursed us, who fed us, and who held us close to her breast. Surely she loved her man in her own childish way, and there he lay dead in a pile. I still have not reconciled myself to the guilt I feel. War is brutal business, and I would give any number of lives, both ours and theirs, if those who remain would live free from tyranny. Truly, to preserve God's design and the order of the races, I would have killed ten times as many as we did. But this felt nothing like victory, and I fear that I will suffer some greater judgment for violations of honor and conduct which we committed. I feel no pride in relaying these events to you, but you so value my honesty. I can tell you nothing more. I love you still in this moon. Gideon. Uh, I can't. Hmm, that's weird. It says Gideon to Anno, but the address is my kindest and dearest Gideon. What that I cannot be there to soothe your noble heart? Is it truly the wars that are the wars are ugly affairs, but you remain shining and spotless in my eyes. I am proud that you have so great a sense of order and decency that you are simply overcome with righteous righteous anger. Huh? And transgress. Even the law to achieve the greater good. Of course, you and your compatriots were filled with rage. I see they went now the thought of ungrateful creatures. That is no way to describe them. 
We give them so much more than their natures deserve. We provide them with not only sustenance and shelter, but discipline and purpose. We give the Lord's truth and the keys to heaven. This is what people hate about Christians nowadays. They're not exactly acting as they should. They're, you know, offending people. They're, they're being bad to everyone or to people they don't like when we shouldn't be. Hmm, this they have perished forever in darkest Africa. Well, it's not like you saved them, all right? And mind you, Africa does have cities, all right? They are not all to nowadays, right? They do have civilization. It's just that the people you see in, say, documentaries, it's always the ones who are not well off. There are. So, and yet at their first chance, they betray us to foreign invaders and would give over everything we built to their corrupt new masters who are filled with guilt because the right action was so difficult. But when our men, our good uh, southern men, wither and starve and die as peace in union camps, are we to think that those prisoners deserve better treatment than honest women are no better than... No, what you did was justice and deserving of a reward, and I will reward you so graciously, so lovingly, that all these horrors will seem as only the memories of dark dreams on a bright and sunny morning. That is very, very racist. shot an unarmed prisoner like a doll and Anna is sad he couldn't kill more with ever increasing love this is a very like twisted in the clan. fuck Blackhaven has had this the whole time they act like Gideon is a hero I don't know if I can come back after this you might as well not come back but I, I don't think Are you sure about this? If I don't turn this key in by five, I'll be fired way before I can ask for my rip. You only have seven more minutes. Huh. Historical Association. I like All right. I wonder what they wanted from Black Haven. My name is Dorothy Mitchell, and I'm currently the director of the Tidewell and Negro Historical Association. I'm writing to formally request admission as a researcher in the library. And archives with the Black Haven Hall Historical Society have already conducted genealogical queries in nearby universities, and I have recovered evidence that connects my family history to the Black Haven estate. You will find with this letter copies of three relevant documents. On an interview conducted by the Works Progress Administration in 1938 with my late grandfather, Simon Howard. Simon had been a slave as youth in Western Virginia and recounted as a researcher. And his grandfather Grace believed she was a grandmother Grace, she believed she was a granddaughter of the master of Black Haven Plantation, given her age. It is natural to believe she met William Harwood, who, as you know, took possession of Black Haven before building Oak Oakmont after the storied battle of Black Haven. The newspaper advertisement placed in the original inquiry in eighteen sixteen. Is that? 1867, corroborating in the interview. The ad also placed by Grace Howard seeks the whereabouts of her father, Rob's kin, in particular his long lost sister. Grace also mentions Rob, a childhood memory of being born at Black Haven, sold away with his mother. A photograph of a curious artifact passed down through many generations of my family. It is a carving of what I believe to be a bird in African styling. Possibly as a coffee figure. 
I was told as a child that it had once been owned by Rob, a token from his father to preserve her memory. I believe research time in your archives would allow me to not only learn more about my own family, but indeed the greater contribution of Afro-Americans to the history of Virginia. I will await a reply at your convenience and will be happy to furnish any additional credentials you may require. In addition, let me extend my warmest regards at on a recent anniversary. Oh dear. And they didn't accept it. So it was just sitting there the whole time. I love this woman. Is it possible her family are really Harwoods? Which means the one with him was kind of not had relations with the Black people. Well, time for Black Haven, gentlemen. An institutional copy. Dear Mrs. Mitchell, it is customary for our institution to respond in writing to all requests for admission. I am replying to your letter of May 12. Black Haven is a professional scholarly archive of the highest standard. It does not casually admit amateurs to chase rumors based on hearsay. Frankly, your missive is no speculative is so speculative as to represent an affront to common decency. Although it is beneath the charge of his body, I am bound to respond to each of your insinuations and defend honor of those who can no longer protest themselves. Allow me to be blunt, it is utterly preposterous to suggest hmm. Ah, a mulatto would be a uh, mixed white and black, I suppose. Uh, utterly preposterous to suggest that William Horror has sorry uh the child outside the bonds of his marriage. William was an episcopal. We have heard of Catholic priests um doing away with with boys and, and maidens, alright? So I don't think that he is above all that. Devout and prayerful and known only for his mild temper and cool constitution. William's well-established and spotless character should have ended the inquiry before it began, but my further examination have revealed damning inconsistencies in each of your examples. In the interview transcript, Rod mentions that the family story that his grandmother would style her hair in the mirrors of the Black Haven ballroom, and that the mirror was stopped with a swan, had it troubled herself to visit our galleries on the third Thursday of each month, when we welcome your kind of visitors, you would know that one of your the mirror survives in their collection and features no such swan decoration. It could be that there was another mirror. I mean she said it herself. Um this person said it themselves, you know. One of the mirrors. The woman in question must have concocted the sword from the wide reputed Black Haven's fa famed seal. In the newspaper advertisement, Mr. Howard requests that his grandfather work in a mill along the Hickory Creek. The period renderings of the essay show no body of water by that time, with multiple documents instead referring to Black Haven Mill sitting next to the Nicholas stream. Finally, I'm distressed to report that one of our archaeological reports reviewed the photograph of your experts reviewed the photograph of your family heirloom and believes it to be a modern forgery. It is true that it shares many of the crude, primitive... Please don't call it that. Don't call it crude. Don't call it primitive. It is that. It's just that. Styling is typical to African art. What if it's just their style? I mean, I know we've done on some art styles before, but if it's a cultural thing, we cannot... You know, make too much of a comment about it. I mean, what if for them, you know, being white is being ugly? What if they describe, you know, white people like that? You know, wouldn't that be bad? But nothing of a similar appearance has ever been recovered in this area of Virginia. To be so much more likely a modern fraud of the cheap sort, commonly preferred in northern cities to appeal to the backwards-looking sensibilities. Wow. Embrace so-called black 
nationalism. For all these reasons, we cannot seriously consider your application for admission. We kindly ask that you refrain from applying so as to respect the time of our staff in dealing with this, with serious scholars. Ugh, Rosemary, you cold piece of... I'd be mad, but you're probably dead. And you're in a folder that's already full of lies. Maybe you're lying to Dorothy, too. Maybe so. I was born in Virginia. Ah, this is the newspaper clipping. Uh, this is so sad. Rob, I hope you and your sister are together now and at peace. I lived all my life in abundance in Virginia. I'm born in the 40s, so I don't remember the year. Now. So many passed. When the war came, three generations of my family have lived under the hills. My mother's name was Grace, and she had a kind heart. She never forgot nothing. She would tell us children stories about family and the history of the state. She always took pride in knowing who the president was and would ask the master about him. Although I remember she knew well enough not to ask master about President Lincoln, for it was on account of him that the war started. She told me that my grandfather, who was very old and no longer spoke in the time that I remember him, she told me that he had been born on Black Haven Plantation. I believe his name was Robert, though I never heard him say it, but everyone on the farm called him Old Rob. She always told he'd been born way back east along the coast, and he has and his mother had been sold out to us when he was a meek infant. She told us lots of stories about her grandmother, Rob's mother, but never about his father. I could tell there was something mad, sad about it. One time I was brave enough to ask, and she said she wasn't sure, but she believed that her grandfather, Rob's father, had been a white man, master of Black Haven, and I never knew any more than that, master of some distant relation within the farm, right, with the farm, like we, now they call it Oakland. I need to read down to the end of every page. Ah, so she does warn us if we haven't scrolled down to the end of the page. I think we will um, extend quite a bit more because I'm reading. <laughs> my mother told me my great-grandmother remembered some of her life in Black Haven that her husband was a cooper or smith or worked next to the mill in Hickory Creek. He used to tell her that her hair was so, as soft as the moss that grew in the clear running water there. My great-grandmother was working in the house before it burned down during the revolution. And my mother said it was as fine a house as George Washington's. I think she liked telling us those stories because it made her feel like this was her country. I and mine never felt that way. It wasn't ours from the war, uh, for the war, it wasn't when the Yankees came, ain't sure now, so I'm glad to be free. Anyhow, my mother told me told me how before my great grandma looked. My grandfather, she would sneak and fix her hair in the ballroom mirrors of Bat Haven, find gold things with that had once perched atop. She would walk all across the plantation and use me. As pink like China on the river, my mother said her grandmother had loved the sunset. Could never take one in again once they sold her west. Felt too much like turning her back on a dear old. This is a lot of detail for someone this old. Simon doesn't seem confused. And Dorothy's letter is so careful. Care if they know I snooped. Greece has been there for three thousand years. It can wait a couple more. Oh. Dorothy, you and I are gonna get some answers. Mm. 
I, th I think Greece can wait. So this is a letter. Contract between Solomon Harwood and Virgin. Who's Solomon Harwood? Commonwealth of Virginia and Gloucester Country, Articles of Agreement made and entered into this first day of January 1868 between Solomon Harwood of the first part, Virgil of Riley, Freedman of the second part, the said party of the second part agree and bind themselves to work for the said party of the first. During the year 1868, on the appointed farm near Oakmont, said Virgil Riley. Oh, work on said farm as before the war, cultivate 20 acres in corn and 20 in cotton, keep fences in good order, and do all other work necessary. And for their said services, to receive one half of the cotton and one third the corn raised. After all necessary expenses are deducted, said Virgil and agrees to furn furnish themselves in provisions, clothing, medicine. His wife further agrees and binds themselves to do all the washing and ironing and all other housework necessary at the South Farmer's House during said year, 1868, said Virgil Riley for, furthermore binds themselves that they will obey the orders of Harwood in all things and do good labor 10 hours a day on average, winter or summer with all lost time paid all at the rent, at the rate of $1 per day. Let us wear off Hmm. So even as a free man, Virgil and his wife are still picking the hardwoods cotton. And they're paid for in mostly Oakmont. Oh, jailed for attempted murder. Attempt on the life of Solomon Harwood. Harwood was drawn in an altercation with Riley. I attempted to collect on a delinquent debt. I wonder if this is this was the one on the farm. I wonder if this was the investigation on the farm, supposedly. That they cancelled because they wouldn't recover evidence of this altercation. Riley had seized Harwood, so when fired the shot, struck him in the shoulder. Speaking of the attempt on... Harwood slight right justified the violence. My wife has been sick going on a week and unable to do her work. Mr. Harwood had come to us demanding a dollar a day for each she missed, and I told him this did not suit me. And it wasn't in contract. It they did not cite anything that would happen in case they were unable to work. But then again, it didn't say that there, it's not allowed. But still, um, suit me after two job years who didn't have that kind of money. He told me to move my wife from the cabin right away, and I replied it would kill her as she was very sick. He said it made no difference and that he would show me my place. He struck me with a strap and had me on the ground. I was afraid he would kill me, I, so I stole his pistol and fired only once. Solomon Harwood sought to clarify the matter while resting under the care of his loving wife from Oakmont. Virgil once worked about as well as any black man, but he has grown too comfortable in his position and has made a habit of indolence. His wife is bitter and preening, probably on account of too many years shared chickening husband. I suspect his sense of purpose will be renewed now that he's to work for the con county where he faces up to 20 years hard labor for his crime. Every generation of these hardwoods is the same. Virgil was just trying to protect his wife and now he won't see her for 20 years. And I wonder if the wife survived. I don't think so. Huh. The historical catechism. Not even uh, Oakmont and Benjamin, Benjamin Harwood. Who founded Harwood Hall? Why? National Nathaniel Harwood on the Black Haven. Uh, Indian Massacres, blah blah blah. Thomas Harwood contribute. Make it only slaves. No. Every British government saves and servants. And they are from the South, so they were in support of slavery. Wow. Well, 
No wonder he was hard to get I gotta that. give them some credit. Nearly every one of these questions is disproved just by the stuff in this folder. Yeah, except for, <laughs> except for the one with saves, I suppose. Heroes who wore the prey. Some monument unveiling. I, it's too small for me to read, since I'm not in uh, full screen. Mr. Johnson always tried to say in seventh grade history that monuments were about heritage, not hate. He needs to read what a monster war criminal murderer Precious Gideon Harwood was. Hmm. This is Rosemary and I. Oh. Dear Rose here, I want to thank you so much for a warm hospitality at the Black Haven. Sad day picnic. Marjorie and I had a wonderful time, and our kids were absolutely tickled exploring the ruins. Aunt Bunch couldn't decide whether they were playing George Washington or General Lee, but they had the right good time. Of course, we also want to thank you for the and the foundation for your continued support of our campaign. No matter what Judge Warren has seen fit to write, I am tireless defender. Constitutional government stay sovereignty. Will work always to promote peaceful and prosperous separation between. Oh, oh dear. Okay, Dorothy. Rosemary was tight with the straight up white supremacists, and we're supposed to trust her over you? No, 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 no. We're gonna crack this. Let's expose this. Holy. Too bad this doesn't have a zoom. Ah, it does. It's just not. Um, so it serves to confirm the mutual suspension of a contract for excavations. Blackhaven Hall Historical Site. As stated in our previous correspondence, we are more than willing to continue with the excavations to Site 5. Well, at this point, we find it extremely unlikely that we will be able to recover any material evidence from the Black Battle of Blackhaven given the returns from Sites 3 and 4. Nevertheless, we have already documented numerous significant findings about the lives of Blackhaven slaves at what we believe to be the near quarters and believe further investigation could greatly benefit your museum and education problems. However, we are bound by recent ethics agreement with other peer firms to a very specific set of protocols regarding the excavation of human remains. So that's why Site 5 was cancelled. There were humans inside. There were human remains inside. So no wonder there were no human bones. There were no human remains in the museum because they didn't uncover them. As we reported in our previous letter, we stopped our initial dig at Site 5 when one of our contractors uncovered a bone we later confirmed to be a human clavicle, likely a male of African descent. Our ethics pledge requires us to immediately make a good faith effort to contact local descendant communities and to take any agreed-upon steps towards repatriation of remains at the expense of the client. As you have declined to pursue this course of action, we are, as mentioned previously, invoking the mutual dissolution clause in our contract. Informally, as a colleague in heritage work, I will still implore you to take these steps on your own. We will still prepare our report for the already completed work and have that presented to the archive at the original deadline. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> well, we are uncovering more drama now. I shouldn't have uh, read so much earlier. But then again, that's alright. 
we can go until 7, I hope, or at least 6.30. Uh, dear Mrs. Morris, I'm writing summary of the findings of the summary judgment verdict rendered. Ah, this is uh, regarding Dorothy, I suppose? Uh, Jennifer Harwood's claim to membership on the board of the Black Haven Hall Historical Foundation. As you are aware, all living direct descendants of Thomas Harwood or William Harwood are automatically granted the status of beneficiaries with regards to the Harwood Estate Trust. You will also recall that the previous settlement between Jennifer and the trust manager found that even though she had emancipated herself from Thomas and Linda following her th time in rehab, she still maintained her status as a trust beneficiary and was entitled to the yearly dividend payment from the Harcourt Industries, co-equal share of 10% of the annual corporate profits as a result of the trust's initial investment in the company. Because the terms of the historical foundation bylaws are much vaguer than that of the trust, he argued that Jennifer should not receive a place on board. But the Judge Wallace has dismissed our lawsuit to prevent her from taking a seat. The judge make it, made it very clear that any direct decisions can automatically claim trust benefits, the annual payment, the foundation board membership. While this outcome is disappointing, the judge also found the board members must be physically present to vote, and as just Jennifer's last listed residence was still in Costa Rica, you likely do not need to concern yourself with this possible thing. Sure. Wait, hold up. Any descendant of William gets a share of 10% of Harcourt profits? Apparently. They're like a Fortune 500 company. Even if there's dozens of current descendants, that would be hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars. And that Dorothy... You've been trying to keep this from me for years, Dorothy. What, the... what if you're right? Forget researching here, you'd be running this place. Oh, with that money? Definitely. Uh, Helen Morris. In regards to your previous letter concerning the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA compliance of the Black Haven Hall Restoration Project, yes, it is true that certain historic sites are eligible for exemption if they meet the established test that compliance would threaten or destroy the historical significance of the site in question. Your argument that Black Haven's long established status as a ruin since 1781 would be imperiled by ADA compliant accommodation is likely to withstand a challenge, particularly in our district court, but I'm sure, not sure this exception is truly in the spirit of the law, given the architectural character of your upcoming project. Nevertheless, I will uh, await your instructions on how to proceed. Hmm. Oh, can't ask the Harwoods to do even one simple good thing. Is that the thing on the mirror? This is the bird Dorothy mentioned. It's not even a swan, it looks like a kitchen. I gotta say, it does kind of look like a robin, but also in an African style. And look at the pattern. Ah, it's the same one as the pottery Isn't we I saw earlier. Somewhere around here? I need to go check. It is somewhere around here, it's so. uh the second one? There we go. Oh, it's the same one. Yes, this one. It's the exact same design. Even the feel of it is the same. It's like the same person did it. It could have been that they did commission... They found this in the slave cabins. That means Rosemary and Blackhaven lied to Dorothy about her evidence the whole time. You were right, you were right, you were right. Okay, but what about the next two objections? Rosemary said Simon's story was false because Black Haven's mirror didn't have a swan. Isn't there a mirror in the gallery? Maybe I can figure out why it doesn't have a swan. Maybe it broke off. I should also call my mom. Maybe she can check out some things for me. Mm. Clever, clever, clever. This is actually a longer game than I thought. <laughs> Particularly because we were reading it. Ah, so I don't need to check down. The 
suppose we could just go out here. Alright, so this is where we were before. It takes too long to load it. All right. Um, wait a minute. All right. I would have to go for a bit. Uh, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> No, they're not going to pay me overtime. They don't even know I'm here. Mom, I'm researching something and it could be really big. But I'm locked out of the internet and my phone doesn't get data out here. Can you see if you can find a contact number for a woman named Dorothy Mitchell? She's pretty old, but I think she lives in the area. Yeah, Mitchell with an M. I don't know if it has one L or two. Just try both. You can just email me from my work address if you find anything. Thank you. I'll call you from my desk when I finish up. All right, Mom. Bye. Okay, I got to go check the mirror. All right, oh, that was so close. It took her so long to read everything. Wait, 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 wait. Do we go here? Oh, oh that's uh, right. Oh. Right. Ah, no, no. Uh, we're supposed to go to the gallery because we're supposed to look at the mirror. It's the mirror that was uh, considered creepy early. Well, creepy by some by coach here. Hmm. All right, all right. We have to get there. We have to take a look at that mirror right there. Well, here it is again. There's definitely no swan. I wonder what other info Black Haven. that they were going to be beta testing object scans. I wonder if I can scan for more info. I wonder if they have more information about it. Hmm. Yes. Glass and gilded oak. Ornamental mirror was started in one of a pair. A pair? Wait. Hmm. Precious by New York estate sale. Ah, the swan. Ah, so it was cut off from the front. When Rosemary told off Dorothy, this hadn't even been discovered. Dorothy, you were right again. Your grandfather remembered. His mother, his grandmother, they remembered. She, oh my God. They remembered. She looked at herself in these shards. 
Okay, there's only one more point left to prove. Let me go check my email and see if Mom found anything. What? Did she, con uh, did she contact her mom with Auntie? Would we be able to get out from here instead of the other side? Though? Ah, alright. It's not like the um, the earlier portion. It always takes so long to load. I wonder what a speedrun of this would be like. Basically a walking simulator. I should see if my mom wrote back. Please. Please do. So she's basically here the whole day. Kendra, I looked up this Mitchell woman. It seems she like she had a truly incredible life. What does she have to do with the Black Haven people? Looks like she was into history. Unfortunately, it seems she passed a few years ago. I found her obituary and attached it below. I also tried looking for her on Facebook, and I believe I found her grandson, Anthony. If she's still at the same place, I found his number in an old phone book. Uh, if he's still at the same place, I found his number in an old phone book. Seven five seven five 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 six five three six. How's that for detective? Call me when you're finished. I want to know what you're digging up on the job. <laughs> wow. So these are the obituaries. Oh, it's her same picture on that flyer. Dorothy Mitchell, 86 of Newport News, passed away peacefully in her sleep, surrounded by attending family, September 14, 2004, at St. Mark's Hospital, Norfolk. Funeral services will be held Friday at 2 p.m. at the Chesapeake Af African Episcopal Church. Burial will follow at Walnut Grove Cemetery. She was born February 17, 1918, the, the daughter of Gregory and Eunice Howard. She married Sam Mitchell a factory foreman and army veteran on June 10th, 1946. He passed away on November 6th, 1992. Mrs. Mitchell was a beloved educator and civic activist, a longtime school teacher, and the first black woman to teach in integrated county schools. She was active in the civil rights movement, leading multiple, multiple voter registration drives and lecturing widely on black history. Mrs. Mitchell was the founder and director of the Tidewater Black Historical Association. It has since been turned into Black Historical Association instead of the other word. Hmm, they updated it. And in 1987, published the historical collection Tidewater Voices, Remembrances of Black Virginia. In 1992, she helped establish the Chesapeake Black Excellence Scholarship Fund. And in recognition of her efforts, she received an honorary doctorate in 1998. Later in life, she was often fond of sending neighbor children home with vegetables from her garden. She is survived by her children, George Mitchell and Amelia Robinson, and her grandchildren, Anthony Mitchell and Daniel Mitchell, and Irene Johnson. Uh, this is the Facebook, the Facebook account. Hmm. And she was called, she was, they had the gall to call her an amateur. When it just so happened. When it just so happened that her family was involved. I wouldn't want to imagine. All right, Dorothy. First, Blackhaven said he couldn't be a descendant from the Harwoods because the bird carving wasn't authentic. That's wrong. It looks just like Blackhaven's own pottery. Next, they said Simon's family was never here because their marriage didn't have time. But oh wait, yes they did. 
last, they say, Simon had the wrong name for the creek at the mill. He said hmm. Hickory Creek. Black Haven said Nicholas Green. What did they... How am I supposed to know what a creek was called 200 years ago? The model over there doesn't even show the river. Uh, let me call my mom real quick and thank her. Hey, Mom. Thanks for sending that stuff along. Let me put you on speaker. Can you hear me? <laughs> Are you by yourself? Yeah, Mom, of course. So, All right, now I know. What did you find out about this Mitchell woman? Mom, I, uh, I'm not sure, but I think Black Haven might owe her family some money. Like a lot of money. And maybe a lot of money. <laughs> oh, did she do some work for them? No, oh, no. <laughs> bigger than that but i don't want to say anything more until i'm totally sure i just have to check one more thing before i leave makes me wish i'd gone to hear her before she passed even the foundation name sounds familiar where have i heard that before one second i'm going to check this chesapeake black excellence scholarship fund mm. here's their page list of projects Sponsor of Leaf, Kendra, baby. Do you know who this woman is? She paid for your scholarship. Her foundation. Her foundation paid for a scholarship. Dorothy, you're the whole reason I'm even standing here. And now she's. Hmm. What do you know? I think this is divine providence. I sure hope she doesn't. Daisy. There was a map in the big house with the field of daisies. It might show the real name of the creek. I've got to go check. Alright, I think we should close this. I should, we should close this for now. And exit. And then we're going... I love how it all connects together. All right, so since we're going to the house and quickly, we're going to run. We're going to run. It was the at the observation book, I think. Wait, no. Or was it? Yeah, it was one of those places near the wall. Mm. This is the longest stream we've had in a while. <laughs> I just need to run up to the house and check that map. And all right. I literally run up to the house. What do you have? It's already nighttime and yet the lights are so scant. I hate this. And it froze. Please, please, let me get up there. <laughs> it's so dark. <laughs> it's so dark and there are no, no options for Gamma. So you're stuck with this, I'm sorry. I am very sorry. The house looks very good though. Alright, where's the... Guess, guess, guess. I forgot. I forgot where exactly.
fit up there. I forgot if it was up there or... Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, I forgot if it was up there. Oh, it's at the bot. Uh, it's below. All right, all right. Really, really badly. Um, all right, so I think we need to go down. All right, the glass is actually making it hard to navigate without the guide. Not, not going to lie. All right. And so we're supposed to look for, I need to look for something with a map on it, one of the plaques with a map on it. I forgot where it was. I think I saw it earlier. Forgot where. Definitely not the cellar. This one, no, it's not this one. This one is facing the. This is the ballroom. It's not here. So dark. Uh, I hate that it's this dark. This is the library. This is not the place we're supposed to go. Definitely not. I don't have the thing anymore. Hmm. Yeah, this is the one with the... This is the river view. It's definitely not the river view. It's something inside, probably. Forgot where it was. Hmm. So this looks. Hmm. There's a foot dynasty. Ah, so there's that part. I think it might have been in the balcony. I think it might have been in the balcony. We're just going to try and be careful about this. Yeah. Hopefully I don't get lost. Alright, so there are um, alternate paths here. This is the bedroom. This is about the battle. Elevated walkway. Hmm, that's where he was. I think this is where it was. Yeah, this is definitely not where it was. All right, so I have to go down and out.
or I have to go out that way. Probably. We're supposed to go here. There we go. Yes, here's the map. And it wasn't found until 2006. So Blackhaven hadn't even seen this when they told her Simon remembered the Rome Creek. Okay, one last time. Dorothy thought her ancestors met at Hickory Creek, but Blackhaven said the only one with a mill was the Nicholas Stream. Let's see. There's a few little rivers here. Oh, I should use the key. Okay. Stables, garden. Is there a Nicholas Street? Hmm. That's, That's odd. It's really there. On their own damn map. Hickory Creek. I wonder why they called it the Nicholas Dorothy was a better stream. Any of them. She really should have much, much better. I think she should take a picture of that one. It might literally be in her blood. Literally, huh? They could test DNA now. The family hmm. could know for sure if they're really harmless after all. Anthony, oh my god, what am I about to drop on you? I gotta find a place with some cell service to call her. Maybe out front on the park bench. Here's hoping. All right. I hate having to go through this one. It's a bit wonky, not going to lie. And it tends to freeze up whenever it's a big scene or whatnot, or if there are too many objects in, in a place. Well, she was already the worst intern ever since. Ah, so she started walking after this. Oh, so they ended it here. Well, at the very least, she doesn't have to explain. Hmm, 1781 and Cassius. That was what it looked like before. You know, I think... Yeah. I think... They decided to have it not be rebuilt because it was built on so many dark secrets like that. Hmm. I'm glad it ended on a good note. Not particularly for her internship there, but at least it was for something better. It was something. 
for something much, much better. And I believe, I think, that's why they chose to not, to leave Black Haven alone. Because there were dark secrets. And, you know, how, what better way to hide it is than to just leave it alone, out of sight, out of mind. But yes, there's a lot of options now for finding out the truth about some things. Especially historically. Especially with uh, when it comes to human human remains. Descendants and all that. What ended up longer than two hours? Definitely because of all the reading. But that was nice. That was, um, despite the minor glitches and some typo errors, um, and the, the lag here and there, it, it was actually very nice. Part of us actually thought it would be partly a horror game. Because there were mentions of ghosts, but I guess they wouldn't go that way and focus more on the historical, the historical part of it. So, yes, um, next week, since we already kind of announced that we would be, we will be playing the rewinder next week in celebration somewhat somewhat in celebration of, of uh the lunar new year actually because of it's a chinese game um yeah although we were also thinking of playing amazing culture patient simulator but it's it's proven too much for our mind So, yes, we're going to go for the rewinder next Saturday. I'm not sure what we're going to do on Wednesday. We'll have to decide on that. Um, either way, though, uh, thank you for stopping by and thank you for uh, joining us in our dream through Black Haven. Which is very a very ironic name. <laughs> it's a very ironic name. 